Trophy. For the Cardinals, it's their Heisman hopeful. Quarterback Dave Ragone, a two-time Conference USA Offensive Player of the Year against Jared Lorenzen, the hefty lefty, who last year finished up his final five games by throwing for 300 yards or more in each of them. Strap yourself in. There are going to be some fireworks. It's Louisville versus Kentucky right here on ESPN2. Now, here's Reese Davis. It's college football on ESPN2 from Louisville, Kentucky, as the number 18 Cardinals host their cross-state rivals, the University of Kentucky Wildcats. Hi, everybody. Mark Malone along with my broadcast partner, Sean Salisbury. Glad you could be with us here. A lot more at stake for the Cardinals than the Governor's Trophy. There have been whispers they could be the first non-BCS team to crash the bowl party this year. If that's going to happen, Dave Ragone, their Heisman hopeful quarterback, is going to have to put up Heisman-like numbers, and it's got to start tonight. And their head coach, Coach Smith, has tried to temper that excitement because he said they haven't had too many great practices this fall. Couple that with the changes, four new ones on offensive line, two new starters at wide receiver, three new offensive coaches, one including the offensive coordinator. They need to temper that a little and come out here smoking early on, Mark. Their opponent, the University of Kentucky, well, they've been crippled by probation. Their second-year head coach, Guy Morris, has been left to pick up the pieces playing for his job. A win over this football team, the Cardinals, would make their season. There's no question about it. We've got to give Coach, coach Morris a chance with the hand that he's been dealt. But if the, cut, the Wildcats get to four or five victories this year, they will stand on their head. This football team needs to deal with the Louisville pressure defense to have any kind of chance to win this ball game tonight. John L. Smith, the head coach of the Louisville Cardinals in his fifth season here has done a wonderful job at 34 and 15. He's turned programs around everywhere he has been an old cowboy from Idaho as Kentucky has won the toss. Wade Tidlachka will be kicking off the junior, 5'11", 199 pounds. Number five, Arliss Beach, a freshman running back, deep to the turn. down about the 24 yard line so Kentucky takes the ball and the hefty lefty Jared Lorenzen perhaps the heaviest player ever to play the quarterback position at this level says he's listed at 275 Sean. yeah Mark are you buying that he told us he's between 292 and 300 pounds and I guarantee looking at the game he's three he's a, a, a m and away from 305 <laughs> it's hard to imagine somebody that large actually playing the quarterback position but he can sling it Look for this screen right off the bat here, Mark. Screen left. Archie Spinner, the senior running back. Let's take a look at the rest of the Kentucky offense. Pinner, who just caught the screen, hoping to get 20 to 25 touches tonight. Derek Abney, who received the kickoff, the leading receiver, 66 with six touchdowns a year ago. Harp, the tight end, offensive line averaging about six foot five, just under 300 pounds. They're anchored by their big left guard, Jason Rollins. Second and 14, I formation, Lorenzen audibly. Gets nothing. Let's take a look at that Louisville defense up front. They're led by the defensive end, Dwayne White. 15 of his career, 27 sacks came last year. That's the linebacker spot, Rod Day. A first-year starter, Michael Brown, the bandit position, the unsung hero in this defense. The secondary one of the best in the country. 17 interceptions a year ago, featuring the stick and pick tandem of Curry Burns and Anthony Floyd at the safety spots. Third and 14 from the shotgun. Lorenzo, under pressure. Dwayne White, Devon Thomas on the play. Sure not the way you want to start off your opening series on the road. Three negatives. Here we go. 
You're already in a long yarded situation. We said they got to deal with the pressure. Lorenzen not exactly fleet of foot. No shot there. Going to force the punt three and out. Not a way you want to start this football game, Mark. White says he likes the bull rush. He bull rushed there. The first punt tonight by Glenn Pakalak. Received on the 45-yard line by Anthony Floyd. He makes a couple people miss and finally brought down at the 43-yard line. A return of 12 yards on the play. Now Louisville gets the ball. Dave Ragone, the Heisman candidate hopeful, over 3,000 yards passing a year ago and 23 touchdowns, Sean. He could have gone to the NFL for millions in a first-round pick, but he told his teammates he made a commitment to the guys he came in with. He wanted to come back and finish up, and he did just that. Should be a big season for this kid. Both quarterbacks tonight left-handed, somewhat unusual. Big and left-handed, aren't they? <laughs> they are. Shotgun formation, four wide receivers. Ragone takes off and is tripped up. Is there a fumble on the play? Jeremy Cottle on the play for the Wildcats. It's ruled down, no fumble. As we take a look now at that Kentucky defense, they're anchored by the six foot three, 311 pound Dwayne Robertson. The linebacker, the fifth-year senior, Ron Riley, who missed all of last year with knee surgery, will make all the defensive calls tonight. And the secondary is a veteran one, but they are a little bit banked up. Leonard Burris, a hernia. Derek Tatum has a knee. And that's Lionel Gates making his first career start at running back. The sophomore, six foot, 224 pounds, picks up a couple. You know, Mark, interesting, Ronnie Riley, the inside linebacker senior for Kentucky, said he didn't believe that Louisville could run the football on him. They were going to have to pass to beat him. He felt Kentucky's front uh, seven was far more physical, or really a front eight is what they run, far more physical than Louisville's was in the run game. Well, the Louisville offensive line has been rebuilt. Coons, really the only returning starter. They're probably trying to protect him a little bit by running the ball. A quick pass to Gent, Ronnie Gent, who is the returning leading receiver on this football team, and that's good enough for a first down. That's real simple play, Mark, with the three wides, and we know Gent is their leading receiver. It's a good person to lean on if you're the quarterback at third down. Here you see Ragone sets his feet quickly. Nobody around in the simple zone route. A little outcut. Gent gets it, moves the chains. You'll see a lot of that today from their best wide receiver if you want to call him a tight end but he's got the most catches on that team 11 yards on the completion Cumby, the free safety making the stop two tight end shotgun ball tipped in the air incomplete and what we're seeing early on here again with this young offensive line is the ball getting out real quick Sean yeah you've seen every pass mark he's taking quick one or two three as we see on the replay you got to create a new line of scrimmage not in the run game and in the pass also getting pressure in Ragone's face. The greatest thing you could do as a lineman, get your hand up. And you saw Burns get his hand up there, knock the ball down. If you're going to get blocked, make it difficult on the big left-hander to make the completion. So we're at second and 10 now. Four new starters on that offensive line for the Cardinals. In motion, J.R. Russell. Immediate pressure. That's a is that a lateral? Right there, that is a is. lateral. No, they're waving it now incomplete. It looked like a lateral to me, Sean. Oh, they missed what. one there. They missed one there. Now take a look at this, Mark. Remember, a lateral is where the quarterback is if it goes back. You're going to watch this ball come back here. Here's where it should be for an incomplete. Take a look at this now. In accordance to where we're going, lines up there. Start at the six, goes about the, or at the 36 and a half. That is a fumble. But hey, that's why we're up here. Third down, not a whole lot of plays in your playbook on third and ten, Mark. John L. Smith looking on, dodges a bullet there. A big third down conversion for the Cardinals. Get him out of bounds, get him out of bounds. Go, under pressure, moving around. He finally has to eat the football. It's the wide receiving core, and that's, that's what we call a coverage sack. Minus five on the play, Otis Grigsby, number 18, along with John Robinson on the play. You bet, Mark. Their total defense, Kentucky's, was 109th last year, which is not good enough to beat a high school team. But you saw the secondary get on these receivers in there, young receivers, new starters for the most part here. When you lose Branch last year, this is a very, very important series for Kentucky to get them out of there and force this long field goal attempt. Great job by their defense under pressure. 
All right, so the Cardinals are going to try a field goal here. Nate Smith, who uh, will try a 52-yarder on this one. His numbers, longest 48 against Southern Miss last October, and this one's on its way. It's long enough, but it's wide left. And so the Cardinals move the ball down the field, but under pressure, they stall the drive and miss the field goal. Right now we're at 0-0 with a little over 10 minutes to play in the first quarter. Wildcats, the Cats taking over on downs. Jared Lorenzen, the biggest man playing quarterback. Let's introduce you now to our third member of the broadcast team, Tracy Wolfson. Thanks, guys. Well, while we're all speculating on how much Lorenzen actually weighs, Guy Morris says he doesn't care anymore. He is throwing away the scales because he's too fed up with trying to tell Lorenzen to lose some weight. So he decided to focus more on the conditioning. Well, Lorenzen says he has been running every day, all summer, all spring, and he is in the best shape of his life. Well, we'll see if he can last all four quarters, and we'll also see if without discipline, he can keep that weight off throughout the season. All right, Tracy, thank you very much. It's going to be interesting indeed. Pinner on the carry there for one yard for Kentucky makes it second and nine. You'll notice that he spent a lot of time from the shotgun, although he's under center on this play and no place to go. Finally unloads it out of bounds. Incomplete. That's okay, because I like the fat Luther Vandross better than I did the skinny <laughs> one. Anyway, what I loved about the the last play was, Mark, and let's not mistake the fact this kid could throw the football. He can. Is it instead of taking a sack and trying to do something stupid, and he told us he's tried to force too many balls, cause too many interceptions. Throw it out of bounds. Let's re-tee it. I know it's third down. Just be smart. Keep your team from turnovers, and it'll be a better opportunity for you. No, I don't uh, envy Guy Morris as he tries to uh, rein in this uh, very talented quarterback. 39 now. For Kentucky, under pressure, little slip screen to Ernest Sims, and he has gone the 30, the 20. Nobody's going to touch him. Touchdown, University of Kentucky, 64 yards on the play. Ernest Sims said he was the home run threat on this football team, and interestingly enough, Guy Morris and his staff spent some time with the St. Louis Rams this offseason trying to find out how they work their screen game. And there's a perfect example of how it works. And Mark, it is absolutely unbelievable. People talk about pressure. I expect them to run 10 or 15 screens today. If you want to deal with pressure, we'll get a chance to see that in a second after this kick. But unbelievable job of hitting it with accuracy and getting himself going. The extra point is up, and it's good. And Kentucky finds themselves leading early in this football game with 9-11 to play. Great job. And when you get the ball and the guys who can run, they're going to put a lot of pressure on Lorenzen. He does a great job of setting up the screen. A little pump fake, accurate throw, deal with the pressure. That's what a screen is. Draw the rush, and the rest is history. Get a man in the open field for a touchdown. Speed. Here it is again. Pressure, pump fake. They didn't get to the big fellow that time. Result, big play on the road. Way to set the tone after a horrible first offensive series. For they did not even block Keyshawn Lowe. They just let him go, and then Sims did the rest. Nobody was going to catch him. 64 yards on the play, and all of a sudden, this crowd has gotten a little quiet here at Papa John Stadium. And you remember the first play from scrimmage for them was that try to throw the screen to the tight inside the, the uh, close side. But what they did there, a little fake to the close side, come back to the open side, and those receivers' receiver screens can be awesome, Mark, if you get the ball in the fast guy's hands. Great job by Sims. Accurate throw by Lorenzen. This we got himself an early ball we game. do, and it's indicative of what we expect here. A lot of quick scoring. Three plays, 65 yards in under a minute for Kentucky. And now the pressure is on Dave Ragone and the Cardinals as we await the kickoff. Taylor Begley doing the duties, and he sends it deep <laughs> out of the back of the end zone. There'll be no return there. Broderick Clark fields it. And now it's Dave Ragone's turn. Tremendous amount of pressure, decided to return for his senior year 
And uh, I'll tell you what, this is a committed guy who has a big arm and a very focused individual. And Mark, he cares about his teammates. There you see the passing yards, which will go up, even though he's got new guys. Conference USA Player of the Year for two years in a row. The key one here is every 55 passes, one pick. So even though he's got the big arm and they put all the pressure on him, he does not throw the ball to the other team. He will keep Louisville in every game this year because of it. Right now, one of three, 11 yards. He's been sacked once and under pressure early on. Lionel Gates, the sophomore running back, who made his first career start tonight, gets the carry. That's good for four yards off the right side. Dustin Williams with a stop. And Mark, we talk about Ragona and Louisville as a passing. You know, they lose Branch and Parker last year, two big time players. But the thing about this is you've got to make some commitment to the run, regardless how good your quarterback is. We've seen it in the NFL with Favre, with Peyton last year, Manning, that if you're not running the ball and you got injuries and you put all the pressure on your quarterback, you get yourself in trouble. I agree. And John L. Smith was concerned about this young offensive line, wanted to protect them early. We have a three wide set, no protection here, empty backfield. The back motioning out, ball down the field, under pressure, incomplete, intended for Gent, the tight end. But again, pressure in his face even when he gets it out on time, Sean. And that is what Kentucky wanted to do, give a bunch of different looks and pressure Ragone, knock him on his back. And we're going to track how many times they hit him in the mouth this football game. It's not just sacks, Mark, as you and I both play the position. It's those pressures and those hits in the mouth that start to wear on you throughout the football game. They add up. And let's, again, remind you that this is a revamped wide receiver core. They lost their two top wide receivers, Branch and Parker, as they face third and six now. Quick, again under pressure. Again, he misses, intended for Damian Dorsey. The senior, 5'7", 172 pounds, and again, they face fourth down and a punt. Knocked to the ground again. Ragone, I imagine he's going to start to get in some people's face. That's an untouched guy down there. The bottom of your screen hits him, knocks him to the ground, and you saw the route, Mark. It looks like timing's a little off, and we expected that early on for Louisville. You like how I say Louisville? Louisville. Do I got it down right? You've been around here. You've had a couple of mint juleps. <laughs> Wade Tidlachka. Is back to punt. Derek Abney, go to wide receiver for Kentucky to receive fair catch. So Kentucky now will take over on the 38 yard line, a 37 punt, no return. We're back to Louisville. Kentucky leading 7 0 to the Derby City, Louisville, Kentucky, as the number 18-ranked Cardinals are hosting the University of Kentucky Wildcats. The Cats out to a fast 7-0 start on John L. Smith's Cardinals, and they take over first and 10 from the 38-yard line. Slot right, I formation, draw play, R2 spinner. Let's go down out of the sidelines, and Tracy Wolfson. Well, Kentucky's issue this year is depth. So they had to find some way to avoid injuries during the summer. So what they did was they only practiced in full pads two times all summer. And they actually lessened their scrimmages and their practices, hoping to avoid any injuries. So we'll see if they can continue doing that. But we'll also see if that they can avoid the injury because by not tackling and not bringing the guy down to the ground and not making those big tackles, that can really hurt them. All right, Tracy, we'll keep an eye on that. That's Pinner as Lorenzen scrambles away from trouble, dumps it out, picks up 17 yards. The conditioning certainly starts with the quarterback, but a lot of movement from this football team and Lorenzen, even though he's probably bordering 300 pounds. No doubt about it. He's not, he doesn't have any bricks on his feet. Take a look at this. This is a big man with some really good feet. Buying himself some time. That's the main position at quarterback. What you got to do, buy time to enable you to do this. Nice soft touch. Grabs him a first down. That's a huge play. And he's just not got the cannon. He's got all the throws. They run the football up inside tough with Pinner. Again, trying to get him at least 20 to 25 carries in this ball game to slow down that Cardinal offense. He picks up four on that play. And, you know, Mark, what Tracy said about conditioning, and we'll see how that works out. But there's two ways to look at it. Do you want fresh legs, which Coach obviously right. Morris needed? But the other side, and we know Coach John L. Smith said he doesn't know how his team would do that by not tackling people to the ground. So it's all about that intensity. It looks early on like Kentucky's taking on that accountability. 
what surprises me is they're they're it's just not finesse. They're running the football here at the Cardinals on second and six. And again, Penner right up the middle between the tackles. Picks up about another three yards on the play. And this guy, what, had about 100 carries last year for a little over 400 yards. A guy they really believe has NFL talent, and they're making it a point that he's going to be a bigger part of the offense this year. Not only that, Mark, you've got a guy who can get out in the open field and run. And let's, they got him listed there at 219. Coach told us yesterday, 238 pounds. He's big time. Third and two. We'll see if he gets the ball on this carry. Got double tight end eye formation and bang again right between the tackles good enough for a first down and right now it's about attitude they're just taking it to that Cardinal defense Mark you hit it right on the head it's all about attitude and short yards I don't I don't care if you put 11 guys up there whoever beats low man wins usually nice cliche but they do they get down they push him off create a new line of scrimmage and that's telling their Kentucky team, Coach Moore, saying, we're not just a passing team. We're going to set the tempo up front, gives those five big fellas up front confidence. Let's remind you that this Louisville defense was 10th in the nation in scoring defense a year ago, giving up just a little over 17 points a game. Lorenzen back to pass, looking deep down the sideline to the left side, his favorite target, Derek Abney, but it comes up incomplete. Josh Minkins on the play. One of the better secondaries in America. And the reason I like this, even though it's incomplete, there you see Abney. Take your chances. There's no better coverage in the world for a receiver and a cornerback than one-on-one. -on -one. Take your shots, make those guys get off, and make them respect you. But that secondary is very, very good for Louisville. Abney coming back this year. He had 66 receptions a year ago. The primary target over 741 yards, second and 10. From the shotgun, under pressure, screen to the right, but it is broken up by Lorani Galishaw. Does a great job reading the screen, coming up and making the play. Looks to be a little shaken up. Holding now, his back. Let's take a closer look now, at this. Now, Mark, it's okay to throw the ball away on a screen. They do a nice job of reading it. There's three on one, three bodies on defense. gets one on offense. And those are the ones Lorenz, and he takes a hit. Don't be afraid to throw that one out of bounds. Could have been a costly, costly play. You can't tell which is the defensive lineman laying on the ground there. <laughs> Third and ten, and we've got a flag on the play. Play is blown dead. It's like illegal procedure on Kentucky. Well, Mark, we're, what, midway through the first quarter, and we've had three screens now yes. by the University of Kentucky. They're trying to keep that pressure off. Prior to the snap, ball start. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Go third down. And our first flag of the night. It's been relatively clean so far. But this can be a drive killer. You jump out to a 7 nothing start. You come out with a little attitude at the next drive. You run it down their throats. You're moving the football down the field. And all of a sudden, you get a costly penalty to make it, what, third and 14 right now, third and, and 15. You'd love to come out of this with three if you can. Out of the shotgun. Blitz. Lorenzen makes a miss. Dumps it over the middle to number 84. Jeremiah Drobny. Good for 12 yards, but short of the first down. But you know what, Mark? That's okay. Now you put into a situation where we got it. We're in field goal range instead of being 52 yards. Now we give our kicker a chance. Lorenz in one of the great shows in college football. Once again, has bought time. Give his team a chance. Now you put him in field goal range. Keep points on the board. At least give yourself a team a chance to go up 10 to nothing. Again, he's almost 300 pounds, but he makes the free blitzer miss. And that brings on the field now Taylor Begley, the redshirt freshman from 41 yards, this to make it 10-0 Wildcats. It was down, it's most of it. Wow, he had plenty there. That one good from 41 yards, and all of a sudden the Wildcats are shocking everybody. Find themselves up 10-0. Can Dave Ragone and the Cardinals, ranked 18th in the country, come back? We'll find out when we return. Right now, trailing 10 to nothing. That's the senior Damian Dorsey trying to get guys going. Tell you what, the stadium is a little bit stunned as well. Yeah, they are. This sea of red, Mark. Kentucky comes down the road and lets them know right off the bat this is going to be a full quarter ball game. So Kentucky kicks off. Back to receive Broderick Clark. Takes it up the middle and is stopped immediately at the 20 yard line. 
16 yards on the return. Dustin Williams on the tackle, number 59. Let's take a look at the drive chart now for the Wildcats on this. Again, after the big 64-yard screen pass to Ernest Sims to jump out to a 7-0 lead, they put a nine-play, 39-yard drive together, three minutes and 38 seconds, the 41-yard field goal by Begley, and find themselves up 10-0. And the two key plays were Lorenz and Bayon time, getting guys the ball, one for a first down, one to get him in field goal range. Play action for Ragon, rolling to his right, throws to Damian Dorsey. But he's blanketed on the play by Claude Segal. And the Cardinals now find themselves second and 10. Boy, how can you not be impressed with the defense of Kentucky right now? We've talked a lot of offense, but they're keeping Ragone in long yarded situations. They're pressuring him every time. And those corners are bellied up playing that press man because they've been laughed at from last year being that, that bad, as bad as they were. We see Louisville now moving the pocket, trying to get Ragone some time. He's one for six, 11 yards, five straight incompletions now for the Heisman hopeful. From the shotgun, plenty of time now. Over the middle, receiver falling down, and we have a flag. Tiger Jones was the intended receiver. Leonard Barres was the man who the flag was thrown at. Best interference, defense, spot foul, medic, first down. Again, Ragon under pressure. To the ground, Mark. It takes a long, a lot of times to get a 6'5 body up on a regular basis. And you know what? Even though it was a penalty in Kentucky, mm -hmm. I'll take that aggressiveness. I don't want to take that away from him. Guys draped all over him, still looking for some confidence is that Louisville offense. All right, first and 10 for Louisville. Wing left, slot right, and they're running the ball to the two tight end side. T.J. Patterson on the carry, the junior for about three yards and a guy that they said is great on pass protection he's smart mentally he's great but he just doesn't have the real breakaway speed that you get from Lionel Gates which is why Gates started the game today. that's exactly right now when you when you're dropping back and you want blitz protection Patterson's the guy but you want open field open space guy who can make bigger plays for you it's Lionel Gates but it looks to me like the, the run game is just almost a passing it just like ah, let's just get this run game mixed in to take pressure off for going they're gonna have to pass again out of the shotgun, three wide receivers. Jones in motion. Free blitzer. Jones ends up with the reception. A hot route here when you got the free blitzer coming off the edge. It, it, it's free blitz, yes, but look at him put the blanket on Jet. While you're looking for a hot route, they pressure Ragone. Do exactly what they're supposed to do. Run with them. Take a look at Dorsey now, the most experienced receiver. No. We're going to play him pressure, too, and make them make the perfect throw. Love what Kentucky's doing on defense. And once again, Ragone was under pressure. Big down, third and seven to keep the drive alive. Three wide receivers, one back, shotgun formation. Plenty of time, plenty of time. Nobody open, and a sack. A sack on the play. As Ragone goes down again. Ellery Moore, the sophomore, 6'3", 289 pounds. And again, this is a coverage sack. Yeah, you bet it is. The motor's running by the defensive line of Kentucky, but coverage all over him. And let's give a little bit of uh, this pressure goes to Ragone. You can hold the ball for so long, but you're a veteran. Throw that football away. Don't take the sack. Jason Weathers giving up the sack at the right guard position. And that brings on Wade Tidlachka. High punt, end over end. Derek Abney starts out to the left. Makes a man miss. Finally brought down just past midfield. 35 yards on the punt, 11 yards on the return. Let's send it down to our broadcast partner, Tracy Wolfson. 11 yards on the return. Well, guys, this city is known for making the Louisville Slugger bats, but I am with a Louisville Slugger right now. Aaron Alvey hit the game-winning home run in the Little League World Series against Japan. And, Aaron, what has life been like since winning that championship? It's been crazy. The publicity has been crazy, too. And uh, 
Well, all these, every time I, I go out, I sign autographs and I love it. And it's, I just love signing autographs for everybody. Tell us some of the things you've been doing so far. I know there's a parade tomorrow, but what are some of the highlights that you've done so far? I've come to this game and uh, Louisville, Kentucky game, and I went to the Riverbats game. I went to a couple of things with uh, our team and everything. So really and now our, we're looking for our parade tomorrow. You've had so many star moments, as has your team throughout these World Series. Tell us what your favorite, what your best memory was. My best memory was when the last out when Casey Jordan caught that line drive, which that, that was my best memory, and I thank Casey Jordan for doing that for me. Well, congratulations. I know you're meeting President Bush this week. Good luck and just enjoy it. Back to you guys. All right, Tracy, thank you very much. Certainly have become heroes in the Kentucky. The state of Kentucky is Abney. Picks up the reception there. Good for four yards. That'll bring up a third down now for Kentucky. Buck, you can't hit a baseball that far, can you? I'll tell you what. Uh, this, kid, this kid could, you know, could go on to play Major League Baseball and have a 20-year pro career. Nothing is going to beat that memory of pitching that well on that night and hitting that home run. And being the guy who delivers oh. a tape measure job. You're not kidding. Unbelievable. Good for Louisville. That's great. Good for Kentucky, the way they're playing right now, too. Third and four for the Wildcats. Lorenzen. In the shotgun, three wide receivers. Going deep down the left sideline, he had a man, Ernest Sims, who caught a 64-yard touchdown earlier today down the left sideline, but just overthrows him. That's that shot up in the hole, Mark, that you want to make that throw when you got a guy who beats press coverage and gets up in cover two and just missed it. A little bit high, but uh, with that cannon, there's going to be a few that's, that are going to end up in the first or second row. His mechanics aren't the best. It's not one of those things that you say, well, hey. And you and I talked about this. I, you know, I say this. If he's that passionate about his game, if he loves football that much and he wants to be a good quarterback, then be disciplined enough to beat 265 anyways, not 300 pounds. Not since he's been 12, man. <laughs> so, Kentucky on the punt. This one's deep. 43 yards. A touchback. Just a reminder that tomorrow, Gino Gadulli and the Cincinnati Bearcats open their Conference USA schedule as they host Adrian Medis and the TCU Horn Frogs. College football on ESPN tomorrow at 4.30 Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Flag on the play. Unsportsmanlike conduct. After the play was over, dead ball, personal foul on the receivers. This will be half the distance, or put ball will be put on the 10-yard line. First down. What we're seeing here is a lot of frustration now from John L. Smith's Louisville Cardinals down 10-0 uh, as we approach the end of the first quarter. Mark, the frustration, you know, they expect to come in here and Although they didn't have great fall practices like Coach Smith told us, and it's showing. It's showing. He didn't like the rhythm and the way they were practicing. And these are the things, the little things that become big things, the discipline that kills you. Get personal fouls when the ball should be on the 20 yard line. Over the last three years, they have dominated this rivalry, so this is a bit of a shot. So, first and 10, they take over on downs from about the 10 yard line. Shotgun formation. Under pressure. Dumps it out incomplete. Intended receiver Lionel Gates. Tell you what, the pressure, there you go. Look at Lorenz in four of eight, 97 yards, and bought some time on some others. Nice touch. Now Ragone, the two of eight, and let's not forget all the pressure he's been under, even the last play, Mark, forcing him out on a little uh, short route. This is not a team in rhythm. Lorenz and obviously getting the best of this one early. There's no doubt about that. Again, we haven't seen a lot of deep balls, or at least deep connections made. They've been short balls, screens, dump offs, but unrelenting pressure from the UK defense on this one. Second and 10. Gates gets the ball off a right tackle. Gets maybe a yard. Mark, we talked about the pressure and given Kentucky's defense been the MVP to date right here in this game. Six hurries, five knockdowns, and two sacks already in the first quarter on Dave Ragone. And that brings us to the end of the first quarter. But we'll be back with more college football action as number 18th Frank Louisville finds himself trailing 10-0 to Kentucky. 10-0 to the University of Kentucky Wildcats. 
as we resume play in the second quarter. This a big third down conversion for Louisville. They find themselves backed up. Little dash to the left for Ragon. Nothing open. Tucks the ball, and he's smothered by Wildcat defenders. Vincent Burns leads the, leads the charge for Kentucky. We keep talking about Louisville's corners. Take a look at this coverage now here by Kentucky. Man to flat nothing. Double team on Dorsey, their best receiver coming back. That is unrelenting pressure, not only up front, but forcing her going on the dash. Nice job by Kentucky. That secondary is playing lights out. So Tidlachka will punt. Two punts tonight already of 38 and 35 yards. From just inside his own end zone. That one was close. Nice high punt, a fair catch called by Abney. And the Wildcats will take over possession on the 45-yard line, 43 yards on the punt. You're just joining us. Let's get you caught up on the first half action. So far, Dave Ragone of Louisville has been under pressure. Four new offensive linemen, they've taken its toll. He's been beat and battered around, while the 300-pounder, Jared Lorenzen, has found a way to move around the pocket get the ball out and get the Wildcats up early 10 nothing what has been a shocker so far here in Louisville first and 10 Lorenzen under center and they hand the ball off inside to number 20 Artus Pinner good for four yards on the play they got second effort in that mark he was hit at the line of scrimmage I'm always looking for backs that can fall forward and that 238 pounds that they talked about, the way he's gained, is sure helping him at the line of scrimmage. He will have to continue to play well to keep pressure off number 22 right there. They're staying up inside against Lafew and Lopez, trying to stay away from Dwayne White. He had 15 sacks last year, and he is a man. Second and six. Lorenzen under pressure, can't get it off, and he's down. They've got a flag on the play, however. Wayne White was the man putting the pressure. Nice spin move. Mark, we talked yes to him yesterday, and he told us that he watches the certain pro mask on a deep five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat the down. Well, keep your eye on Dwayne White here at the bottom of your screen. There's a little spin move. Move inside, move outside. Says he studies the players like Strahan to try and learn a move, puts it to work on the practice field. There it went to work. This isn't just a guy who bull rushes. Mark and no. talk to him. He's trying to be a, a versatile player that you can't concentrate on just one pass rush. 27 career sacks, most of the NCAA right now of any active player. Second and one. And immediately, Dwayne White back in and swarming Lorenzen for the sack. And what we say, he doesn't just have a bull rush, but you know what? He uses this bull rush. This is, you can't do this. Unblock a guy like that or miss him. Especially maybe the best defensive end in the United States. Lorenzo, no chance. You've got to put a body on him. Bad design there, too. And two consecutive plays, they've asked the running back to block Dwayne White, who is six foot three and 280 pounds. And Kentucky made the mistake mark earlier this week saying it doesn't matter where he lines up. We don't care about Dwayne White. Well, they better start caring. Well, Kentucky is two of five on third down. This is third and six out of the shotgun for Lorenzo. Downfield. Intercepted Anthony Floyd had the ball go in and out of his hands as the receiver slipped coming out of the break. Can't fall down. They got away with one there. Lorenzo threw it on time. Receiver falls down, almost an interception. They'll have to punt to get back to that Dwayne White mark. There you see now. Comes out of it nice. Not even any contact by the DB. Keep your feet. That's what you get scholarship pay for. Got to stay up on your feet. Almost an interception. They got away with it. Getting back to Dwayne White, the defensive end. Mark, you can't block him with a 200-pound back. No, you cannot. That's not a good design. I think I'd have that conversation on the sideline if I was Lorenz with his head coach. This punt is uh, out of bounds. It'll be marked at about the 24-yard line, 28 yards on the punt. We're back with more football from Louisville after this. Defensive coordinator Chris Smealan trying to get his defense cranked up 
they have not been the kind of defense we thought we would see here tonight. Got to get this offense cranked up. First and ten. First and ten. And we have a flag on the play before the play is, gets off. Illegal snap. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Go first down. And again, we can see now, I mean, this is just adds to what we've been talking about with this new offensive line, Sean. Only Dan Coons' center is the guy that's returning. Everybody else is brand new here. There's no doubt. And I understand physical mistakes, Mark, but I don't give a hoot if you're a freshman or a senior. You can't move before the ball snapped before the play starts. First and 15 now. They start in a hole. And bam, right off the bat, Otis Grigsby nails Lionel Gates in the backfield. And now they dig themselves a deeper hole. Jerry Spencer, you got to do more than this. You got to help out. Offensive lineman gets beat right off the bat. No shot. Grigsby gets across the line of scrimmage. There's Otis right there. And, and really not a powerful guy. I mean, he sure looked powerful on that one. 253 pounds, more of a speed rusher, but again, just just horrible technique and execution by the offensive line. Second and 19 now for Louisville. Flags play stop. Cardinals can't do anything right. I assure you if this continues. Yeah. Ball start. Offense. Penalty. Let's go second down. I assure you if this continues, Mark, John L. will, will, will go all off on these guys in the locker room. I mean, he's an old Idaho cowboy, and we see him there, and you can, you can just tell he's fuming. He is a drill sergeant. They hit, they go after him. He's an old school guy. He has just got to be about ready to blow a gasket right and, now. And the crowd is not loud right now. you got the offensive side of the ball. You're right there. Listen to your quarterback. It's in inexcusable. You're going to miss a block every now and then. But don't make the mental errors because Ragone's going to start to go off himself. Second and 24. Need to pick up at least half of this. Pressure right off the bat. Unblocked. Ragone somehow escapes and finds some open territory. When you get a block, finally drug down at about the 32-33 yard line. Great play by Dave Ragone, picking up 22 on the play. And he told us yesterday, Mark, and talking with him as we take a look at the replay, that when their team struggles every now and then, he loves to run out of the pocket. And he said, if he wanted to slide, he'd be a baseball player. This is a big 6'5", 260-pound body. But take a look at this. He's not going to the sideline. He's going to take someone on. He does just that. Gets more than half of it back, like you said, Mark. And now... Does Louisville respond, the rest of the 10 guys, and say, that's what our leader does. we got to answer that. It makes it third and one. What looked to be an impossible situation now looks like a makeable down. Quick pass. And it's tipped right off of the bat of Otis Grigsby. Number 18. Coming up big twice on this drive. And now Ragone and Louisville, although they get themselves out of the hole, again, cannot convert on third down. There's Grigsby here. He's going to get here, but he's going to jump, Mark. He's going to jump. He can't get to the quarterback. You know, if you're perfect, great job. You realize you're not going to get there on a three-step drop. Jump up, make the play. Use that body for something. Grigsby's made two great plays on this series. And if you're smart, Louisville, next time a guy jumps, you give him a little rib shot to keep him on the ground. Wade Tedlachka back to punt. His last punt, a 42-yarder. It ended in a fair catch. This one almost blocked way up in the air high, but short. And will be out of bounds. Just past midfield. As the two-star John, right now the University of Kentucky all over Louisville. It's been pressure from the opening bell. And Kentucky has Louisville rattled 10-0. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Louisville as the Cardinals find themselves trailing 10 0. Three yards on the pickup for Kentucky will bring up a second and seven. We've got an injured player on the field. You know, Mark, what's interesting about this is that everybody talks about Kentucky as being a finesse football team for the most part. You know, right. they're finesse on defense, they weren't very good. Lorenzen, who throws last year five straight 300 plus yard passing games. But in this game so far, it is a physical tail whipping that they're giving Louisville. Forget the finesse. They're whipping them up front. Curry Burns, the strong safety, who uh, led the team in tackles a year ago with 107, is down on the field right now.
ESPN 2's presentation of primetime college football brought to you by Circuit City. We know how you feel. That's why we're here. Circuit City, we're with you. That is the School of Law here on the University of Louisville campus. And this is Papa John Stadium. Let's set it down to the field in our cohort, Tracy Wolfson. Tracy? Well, as you can see behind me, this rivalry extends way beyond the hardwood. For years, it was UK that had everything on the line. They're from the bigger conference, a bigger school, a state school. But now UL comes in, and they have not everything to lose. UK is trying to spoil their season. Louisville, preseason top 20. Dave Ragone, Heisman hopeful. This is their most anticipated season. And if the Cats can come out and get a win tonight, they will spoil a season that Louisville has been waiting a lifetime for. There's no doubt about that, Tracy. Thank you very much. Pinner there, the carry. No gain, but this rivalry, which was gone, for what 70 years Sean they played six times between 1912 and 24 then the series resumed in 94 when we talked to players I mean they're all about there there is a chip on their shoulder there's some real hatred between there's these no teams. doubt and mark and it's a respectful hatred but you know people say why play this rivalry so early this jump starts the season for these two teams and I love it and a rivalry is when there's competitiveness and this one makes it a rivalry of course a win would make Kentucky season program on probation as Jared Lorenzen rolls left and fires the cannon downfield that's going to be good enough for a first down Aaron Boone number 13 the playmaker on this football team comes up with a reception good for 12 yards well I've been waiting for this mark a double team on Dwayne White at the top of your screen don't leave one on him there you see smart move keep your best football player away and then we see the route at the other end Abney here possession receiver push you Nice job coming back to the football. Lorenzo puts it where only his guy could catch it. First down. High formation, slot right, first and ten. Play action. Going deep. He's got a man one on one, but great play. Broken up by Lorani Galishaw. Abney, the intended receiver, and he had what he wanted man on man coverage. Looking to put the dagger. Yes, and it's great fake by Lorenzo, but what you got to do is get the ball up a little quicker here. This guy had him beat early. Now when you set your feet, throw the football. He took that extra crawl hop in there that allowed a good secondary to stay on him. Had him beat, but he hesitated just a second. Comes out of it. Hey, well, when he tucks that ball and has got to hide it, nobody sees it in the play action. <laughs> second and ten. Hands the ball off. To Alexis Ngengue, four yards on the carry. And Mark, this makes it manageable. Makes well, it very manageable. They get the football, get it in there. Now you're third and six. You've got an opportunity to mix in. A, you can either draw them, you can screen them, you can throw the football. And now with the completion, even if you don't get the first down, you give your field goal team another chance. Points, points, points is what the Of course, when you've got the 10-0 lead, you can take your time and run the football now. Milk the clock a little bit. Shotgun formation, third and six. Plenty of time. Steps up. Finally, the pressure comes. Lorenzo drags a couple of defenders with him before he finally goes down. Tyrone Satterfield. It was Johnny on the spot, number 93, the sophomore, 319 pounds. Great coverage by one of America's best secondaries. You see Minkins running with him. That's where uh, Lorenzo wanted to go with the ball. <laughs> Almost wanted to do something a little careless. You see the pressure, but it takes some extra real estate to bring the big fella down. Well, Satterfield's 319 pounds, and Lorenzo carries him for about five yards, looking for somebody to throw the football There's to. There's a reason, because Lorenzo's about 319 <laughs> that's, himself. <laughs> that's true. All right. Bacalac had a shank out of bounds in his last punt. Averaging about 40.3 yards a punt, and we have a whistle on the play. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Still fourth down. Clock will snark on a snap. No harm done there, Mark. You want to move back and give him a chance to. 
Pack -a -lack, hit a full wedge. Yeah, Pakalak considered the number three punter in the NCAA average 44 and a half yards last year. 18 inside the 20 is what he's going to try to do here. It's a high one. Oh! And his coverage cannot keep it out of the end zone. Hey, rookie, welcome to the NFL follows the lives of six players, including Joey Harrington and David Carr, as they embark on the journey from college to the pros. The show documents everything from the anxiety of the draft to the final roster cuts. Part of the block, Tuesday at 8 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. For more information, you can log on to ESPN.com. Beautiful skyline here. A view from Papa John Cardinal Stadium. Back to Spires and Churchill Downs just behind us. Not much of a gain there. Talking about the rookies, we've watched Ragone struggle in part. That's because of a loss of a couple of rookies, particularly Dion Branch, who last year had 72 catches for over 1,100 yards, a second round pick of the Patriots came up big in his NFL preseason debut. Sean, you and I watched that game. They couldn't stop him. He's a difference maker and will be at that level also. <laughs> right now, we're going wishes he was in a red uniform. Second and 14. Audibling, changing the protection. Seems to work. Right, flushed out to the left. Under pressure. Oh, fumble. The ball's loose. And Kentucky's on top of it. Dave Ragone trying to make something happen here. Tries a little bit too much. Breaks out of the pocket and can't hold on to the ball. Claude Segal with a fumble recovery. And that puts the Wildcats in the driver's seat. And they've said Dave Ragone has one weakness, Mark, the coaches have, and that's that he's too competitive. And this may be the case, but I want you to look at this push in here. Forces him out of the pocket. Nowhere to throw the ball, great coverage. Now look at the hit, put that helmet on the football. Nice job, loose, Kentucky, got an opportunity in the red zone now. Great field position. So it's first and 10 for the Wildcats. Eye formation, play action, just a little flat pass. Out to Ronald Johnson. Redshirt freshman. You always want a back to be a good chipper. Dwayne right here at the bottom of your screen. Nice little chip, bought a little time on a short three-step drop. Get the ball in the flat. And as Lorenzo told us yesterday, needs to throw the ball to the backs more, Mark. Again, Pinner is blocking Dwayne White. I think if I'm Jared, I'm going to have a little talk with my coach about that, change that blocking design. I formation, Jared doesn't like what he sees and calls a timeout. So why Guy Morris and Jared Lorenzen talk about it. We're going to take a little time out here, but we'll be back. UK leading 10 nothing. 10 nothing. This secondary, 44 interceptions for the Cardinals over the last two seasons. Only Miami has more. This defense may have to bail the Cardinals out because we're going in the offense. Just looks horrible. Second at six. That's Pinner. Off the left side, down to about the 10-yard line. And Mark, Gain of four yards on the play. Mark, you couple that with not just the interception, but the last two seasons, they've been second in all the NC2A and takeaways. Yes. So you got the secondary, you got a great pass rush team, and you got a team that's Johnny on the spot, knows how to get the football. But Brent Pease, the offensive coordinator of Kentucky's offense, doing a good job of protecting it right now. 96 takeaways over the last two seasons for this Louisville defense. That's alarming. Oh, it's amazing. Ranked 10th in scoring defense a year ago, and they've got to come up big here as it's third and two. I'll tell you what, that's a lot of beef pushing that pile. I'll tell you, I'm not sure if I'm real happy and I, if I'm the center and the coach calls a quarterback sneak and Jared Lorenz is the quarterback. <laughs> and, and, the, and the quarterback may be bigger than the center. Yeah, I guess it, I got a chance at two yards and I got 300 plus pounds, a quarterback going through. Goes right down there, keeps his head down. A lot of beef. Robert McCune on the play finally brings the big fella down. And not good enough for a first down. It's fourth and one now. I formation. Lorenzo changing the play. 
And it's close. It's close. Pinner gets the ball out of the eye. The pile pushed forward. It looks like he might have it, Sean. Yeah, I think he does, Mark. And the thing I like, after first contact, you saw that big body of 238 pounds get the extra push they needed for the first down. And he put on a ton of weight, about 15 to 20 pounds, which obviously is helping him after initial contact. All right, take a look at the offensive line here. This is Sylvester Miller, 6'5", 297. And he wasn't even using much legs no. in rear end. He stood up, but he found a way on White to keep him out of the play. That's a lot of muscle on muscle. A stalemate against Dwayne White is that, a win. That's the darn right game. And there's the difference, Mark. Penner being able to fall forward. And I, the backs, you judge good backs on their ability to take initial contact and fall forward. And Penner's done that a couple times today. Guy Morris said he wanted him to touch the ball 20 to 25 times in this game if they were going to have a chance to win. Right now, he's got 12 carries for 25 yards, so not a lot of big gains. But again, they're chewing it up, they're chewing it up, and they're 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 delivering it with an <laughs> attitude those against that Louisville defense. We're going to take a timeout, but we're back right after this. First half, the Cardinals down 10-0, and Kentucky is driving. First and goal inside the 10. Huge series for this Cardinal defense to hold him to a field goal. Pitch outside the pinner, and he's looking for pay dirt. Untouched. Touchdown, Wildcats. Love the misdirection. Eight yards on the touchdown carry. Nice design by Guy Morris and the Wildcat offensive coaches. Fake a little dive, pitch it out wide to Pinner. We saw him pound and pound and pound at 238, but he's able to beat that Cardinal defense to the end zone. Turn that corner a little bit, and after the, after the extra point, we'll get to see exactly how he did it. And I love misdirection, especially when they've been hitting play side the entire game, Mark. Fifth career touchdown for Pinner as they try for the extra point. Bad snap and Taylor Begley. Did not get it through. That might come back to Hanna. That makes it 16 0 Kentucky. It might have been Dwayne White that blocked that kick, Mark. But the key here, yeah, it might come back to Hanna. They need that extra point. But the run in from Penner was huge. And I love the way that Brent Pease, their offensive coordinator, designs this play. And, 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 a, and a key block that's going to give Penner a chance to get to the edge. Watch the block by Boone here. Going to come down, a little crack, sets it up, goes against force. Nice job. Pinner's speed gets him outside. But I like the way the players design. Look at this. Little fake play side. Misdirection. Pitch to the outside. When you lose contain against a good fast runner, you're done. They lose contain. Does Louisville defense. And then the extra points blocked. But you're right. They come back to get him. Get in there. And once again, that All-American Dwayne White is one of the best in the country. Doing it all, including special teams to block that kick. There's Penner, Mark. That's a big boy at 238, but he showed he's got a little, some, some little wheels to get outside. 13 carries, 33 yards so far, so he's on pace to carry the ball 20, 25 times in this football game, as Guy Morris hoped he would. And now we've got just under four minutes to play and a chance for Dave Ragone and Louisville to get on the board before halftime. Hey, the first down, they'll take that, won't they? Just a reminder, tomorrow night, Al Michaels and John Madden are off, but be sure to join Keith Jackson and Dan Fouts as they cap off ABC's Holiday Weekend Bash, presented by AT&T Wireless. The Auburn Tigers take on number 19, USC, at 8 o'clock Eastern. ABC Sports, the class of college football. Hey, Mark. Mark, you want me to start uh, singing my fight song for you? The, no, the Trojan University of Spoiled Children? <laughs> no, that'll be all right. Let's see if Pete Carroll's got something going on for that <laughs> team this year. I was a Pac-10 boy myself. You know, I can't root for the Trojans. I cringe when I hear that song. <laughs> all right, David going out of the shotgun. A little play action of himself, this time under pressure. Oh, makes two guys miss. Back to the right. He has been... The only offense. He's taken all the hits. Take a look right now at the offensive numbers. That is not offense. That's lack of, Mark. 22 plays, 31 yards, averaging what, a little over a yard a play. That's not good enough. 
And we've talked about the offensive line, and certainly they've allowed pressure on Ragone, but these wide receivers have not done a very good job getting open. You must win, and they're not winning, and they talked about that lack of experience. Second and seven, quick pass inside, incomplete. Victor Glenn, number 88, cannot hold on to the football. And we have a flag on the play. Might be a late hit on Rago. Yeah, and you know, Mark, when you're going so good on defense, stay away from the head. Hit the guy and get out of there because your defense is playing so well. Personal foul. Roughing the passer on the defense. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic. First down. Take a look. This is him right here now. You're going to come in. You're going to put a hit on the quarterback. Do it right. Ball's released. Stay off him. That's way too much time. I understand you want to be physical. There's a difference between being physical and being dumb. That was dumb. Ball was dropped. You would have had him in a long yarded situation. Don't give them momentum if you're Kentucky's defense. Careless play. First and 10. 3.13 remaining. Going under pressure. Screen, but the screen man is tackled immediately by Jeremy Cottle. Number 68. Mark, what a difference of what, what, what a difference a play makes. Same blitz, same thing. Gonna come off the top here. Gonna hit him, but now this is a fair hit. Boom, put a nice lick on him. Force a throw in, complete pass on a screen. Nice job. Covering the back all the way. Now that's the way you're supposed to play disciplined football. We're going two of ten, 12 yards in the first half. Amazing. This is a man that everybody concurs around the country. It's a big-time NFL prospect, certainly a Heisman hopeful. Second and ten, rolling left, throwing down the field. The ball's on the money, perfect coverage, and they're saying yes, a reception. 17 yards on the play, and Ragone is gassed. J.R. Russell with a the catch. They love J.R. Russell's potential. Take a look at the top of your screen. It's just a, they're going to dash it and run a comeback at the top. The key to this is give your quarterback space to the sideline and finish back at the quarterback. Ball is thrown low and outside. Take one more look at this mark from the end zone angle. Nice job by the receiver to protect and give Ragone a shot to throw J.R. Russell big body too. Cardinals, that's their fourth first down of the first half. 240 left on the clock, dumping it out into the flats to Gates, who's immediately swarmed by Kentucky. Just about not even a yard on the play. Let's call it no game. Well, Mark, that concern that, that, that Tracy talked about at the top about will, will they be able to wrap up a tackle because they did a lot of thud drills in Kentucky because they only had two full practice pads. Well, there you go, wrapping up. Nice job making sure that when you make that first contact that it stays that way. Second and 10, 2.11 left. McGone. Brings the player in motion. Blitz makes him miss. Right open to the flat, almost. T.J. Patterson almost made the tackler miss. Would have been a big gain if that might have happened. But Derek Tatum, who hyperextended his knee in training camp and has been a little bit limp, comes up and makes the play. Watch him wrap up. Now, Ragone, bad snap. Eludes the blitz, the unblocked guy, gets the ball in the flat, take the breakdown, make a good tackle, hang on. Was probably prevented another four or five yards. Nice tackle by Tatum out there in open space. Louisville one of six on third down. It's third and seven from the shotgun. Protection this time. Had a guy wide open. Number 88, Victor Glenn. And this time, Ragon can't get the ball there. You know, you know what? They're all over the tight end, Jet, but I think what Ragone is telling. Not Jet, there you see Jet, nice in and out coverage on him. But what they're saying is I think that Ragone wants the receiver to run away. He was throwing an in-cut, receiver was running up the seam. Ragone was telling him, I need an in-cut. There again, Mark, we're talking about the communication, not having the veterans. That's what he wanted there by Victor Glenn. Glenn last year, just two receptions for 31 yards. Now he steps into a role where he has to play all the time. This is the problem we expected we might see from the Cardinals offense. Yeah, he wanted he wanted Victor Glenn to run away inside with that open space there, and he kept going up the seam, and that's that's why the underthrow. 
So the Cardinals take a timeout, face a fourth down. We'll be back. They're trailing 16 to nothing. Casey Wilson, Louisville and Kentucky. Big play for Louisville. Right now, a fourth down. Rated number 18 in the country. Find themselves trailing 16 to nothing. With just over a minute to play in the first half. Fourth round. The bigger plays of their season right here. Bad snap. We're going picks it up. Plenty of time. More time than we've seen him have all day. And he drops it right into number six. Damian Dorsey, do they call it in or out? They say it's a reception. What a great throw and catch. Urban Flowers, number 32, delivers the lumber. Well, you know what, babe? This is one of their favorite routes. Like, you watch Dorsey now. Going to sell it on the inside. Little post corner. Swims right by him. Nice throw to the outside shoulder by Ragone. 29 yards, pulls it in. The ball, ground's not going to cause that fumble. Good job. Nice pitch and catch. I love the fact that John L. Smith said, hey, it's fourth and six, I don't care. Let's go do it. We're a BCS-type team. They better quit worrying about BCS and make more plays like that. Great what, pitching chance. 29 yards on the reception, and that sets up the first and 10. Just inside the 15, 111 left on the game clock. Ragone throws it to the end zone. Intercepted? No, they're saying incomplete, out of bounds. Antoine Huffman, the dimeback. A red shirt freshman, six feet, 170 pounds, catches the ball, but he's out of bounds. Nice job by Huffman, trying to work that little pylon there, Mark, with the nice pitch and catch over the corner. Ball a little bit underthrown. Huffman, you know what I love is that I get so many DBs playing the man instead of the ball. Mark, the ball goes up. Huffman takes a look at the ball and plays the ball. No pass interference chance and almost an interception. It's great teaching skills for you kids at home, playing the football when it's in the air. Second and 10. It's been a long drive, and all of a sudden, we haven't seen as much pressure. You wonder if the Wildcat defense is a little gassed. Incomplete. Great coverage on the play by Derek Tatum. Let's check in at the studio and Reese Davis. Reese? Well, Mark, coming up at halftime, Virginia Tech gave LSU a big old taste of Beamer ball, and some fans got a taste of pepper spray. We'll explain that. We'll have Bob Davey, Mike Godfrey talk about the end of the game situation with Washington and Michigan, and it is the year of the quarterback and what Rex Grossman really needs. Mike's going to let you in on that. We'll see you at the half in just a bit. All right, Reese, we're looking forward to it. John L. Smith looks on. Before this drive, Louisville 29 yards. This drive, 66. Big Third down, Ragone escapes the pressure, bounces outside, makes a couple people miss, bounces off a couple of more, and finally brought down at the 12, excuse me, the seven yard line. Tell you what, Mark, he'll find a way to keep him in the ball game, won't he? What a great athlete for a big man, but go back to the pressure again. He's been knocked down 10 times. That is the 16th hurry, two sacks and one turnover. They're putting pressure on him. How long can he continue to do this without some protection? Right now, he needs a rest as Louisville calls a timeout. He's gassed. His coach says, and Ragone admits, he plays the position with a linebacker mentality. A lot like a guy that just got inducted into the Hall of Fame, Jim Kelly, who was with the Buffalo Bills. He's going to look down the gun barrel. He's going to take in the chops. He's going to make the throws that are necessary to win football games. And you know why guys like that, and Kelly, and you can add far to that list, what it does is that your players on your football team see that, and it becomes contagious. You say, man, alive, I got my quarterback out there who's going to be a million-dollar man a year from now, but he's out there selling out for us and making a commitment to us. And you know what? I'm not going to slide. I'm not going to go down talking what Ragone says. And I love the mentality, but the last thing they need is for him to be too careless to get himself hurt. Oh, I agree with you, Coach said, and Racon admitted, he was frustrated with this new offensive line early in spring drills and in a training camp. He's learned to, to get over it and understand that that's what he's got to work with. Somehow in this drive, he's been able to overcome that, get out of the pocket, make plays, and that what, that's what makes him a great quarterback. Mark, you're exactly right, and, and trying to be patient, I know it's tough, but when you've got four new offensive starters on the line, that is the most difficult position for five guys to gel together in just a short matter of weeks during training camp. Well, they're one for one on fourth down. They converted one to keep this drive alive earlier. Now it's fourth and three with 42 seconds on the clock. John L. Smith and his quarterback, Dave Ragone, have talked it over. Line up at the shotgun. Three wide receivers to the right. Tiger Jones in motion. Dash back. Wide open. Jones. First down. First down, Louisville. Five yards on the play. 
Difficult throw for a left-hander. Rolling out, touch pass, especially a tired left hand. That's why he'll get the big bucks, Mark, to be able to go against his body, throw it up there, nice little soft touch, give his man a chance to catch, get to the first down marker, takes a big, big hit, gets out of bounds, but now it's the second time in this drive now they've gone for it on fourth down and converted both. And Tiger Jones on fourth and three they had no receptions last year. That's the guy you choose to throw to. So Louisville out of timeouts, first and goal, 12th play of the drive. Going, looks, doesn't like what he sees, moves, bounces again, now under pressure, throws it in the middle of the field, almost caught, but incomplete. Now that's what you can't do if you're Dave Ragone. He got away with one there. I know he's trying to make a play, and he's a one-man record crew right now. I know he likes I know he likes Gent in this one there at the top of your screen, the tight end Gent. Run to the flat, nice coverage. Cutting underneath, tries to come back to him. But you know what? That's a dangerous play with pressure. You almost want to throw it away and re-tee it. You don't want to throw away now. They need points down here, Mark. Down 16 zip. 64, Deion Holtz, the redshirt freshman, applying the pet pressure. 13th play of the drive, 78 yards, just under four minutes. Incomplete out of the end zone. They throw it up for number nine, Joshua Tinch, a basketball player who's got a 40-inch vertical jump. They told us they'd be looking for him down in the red zone. This is a good spot for him, but as you and I both well know, never in the history of football has the ball ever been complete when it's been caught out of bounds. So <laughs> it's tough down there. They're into the short side of the field. They're throwing it into the short side of the field. Got to give yourself a little more room. So third and goal, no timeouts remaining, 25 seconds on the clock. Play selection here, Sean. What do you call? You know what? I I think you got to move him out of the pocket, give him a run pass option, um, and give Bergone a chance to get on the edge and work it that way. Well, they've got ends lined up wide, a safety wide, trying to keep him pinned in, and a blitz up the middle. Bergone somehow avoids it, gets loose, throws a rocket to the end zone, touchdown Louisville! Dave Ragone, he doesn't have anything left in the tank. He almost throws an interception, trying to get the ball to Ronnie Gent. It comes back and gets Gent again for the touchdown. Two yards on the play. And we've got ourselves a ball game. Man, man alive, Mark. You know, they got pressure inside. Another reason why I said move the pocket. Well, they take the pressure inside, but what's he... You can't hear it over the crowd. The penalty is excessive celebration. Right now, I think the Cardinals will take that. Yeah, they Something will. Something to celebrate about. But it will move the extra point back considerably now. What? Well, that's just a wonderful individual effort on Ragone's part. Get a chance to see that here in a second. But he's single-handedly on that drive, kept him in, making plays with his arm and with his feet. So Nate Smith will kick the extra point. From way back, earlier he missed a 52-yard field goal try. This from 35 yards out, and it's good. And the here, here, here you go, Mark. I say move the pocket. Well, they ended up moving the pocket anyway to try to get rid of the pressure because uh, Ragone had to buy some time. Pressure coming inside. Gent, there you see the tight end again going to the flat. But it's a sign of a good player. Keep moving. Give your quarterback an opportunity. Nice throw by a tired Dave Ragone on the run. There you see the end zone look. We're going by in time. You don't have a strong arm, Mark. You don't get that play in there. No. I'm telling you, the guy is gassed. He had a free blitzer right in his face. Somehow managed to make the guy miss in that physical condition and then make the throw, the stick throw, keeping the play alive. And that, again, is why he is regarded so highly by NFL scouts around the National Football And he is ultra competitive, and, and there you see, making a play, and he is tired, Mark. We talked about Lorenzen being gassed. Tell you what, Ragone's running around far more than Lorenzen is, and his conditioning is gonna help him in the third and fourth quarter. One hopes, or one wonders, I'm sure John L. Smith hopes, that that kind of play inspires the rest of this football team, especially that young offensive line, that somehow Ragone is getting it done despite the way they're playing. And I'll tell you what, if you're an offensive lineman, the five guys, you turn around and see your quarterback doing that, you better be ashamed of yourself that he's the one out there working and go in the locker room, come out at halftime, 
and kick each other in the rear end and give your quarterback a little bit of help because he cannot continue this tempo for four quarters. They have got to pick it up and help we're going some way, but he keeps his receivers alive, and there's why Ronnie Gent is the best tight end in Conference USA. Ragone had struggled so poorly with all that pressure on that drive, 6 of 11 for 55 yards. They converted two fourth downs, and the Cardinals kick off. That's Abney who receives for Kentucky, and he's going to get to about the 20, 21 yard line. So Dave Ragone wills himself, despite just being battered in the first half, to a touchdown drive by the Louisville Cardinals. But I'll tell you what, this has been just, it's been hard to watch, Sean. It sure has, Mark. I can feel it up here. And we talk about him being tired, but let's not forget the number of times he has to pick himself up and continue to compete. He's getting battered and bruised, but I assure you when all said and done, Dave Ragone's gonna be stand. Take a look at that now. He's been knocked down in the first half 13 times, just too many, they're gonna kill the clock. Ragone, individual effort has kept them in this game. Yeah. The only reason there haven't been more sacks is somehow he's been able to keep plays alive, avoid free blitzers, and miss assignments on the offensive line. Tell you what, it's uh, it's been an entertaining first half, and now with the Louisville score making it 16-7 Kentucky, we do have a game, and I think that Guy Morris has got to be a little nervous if he uh, if you're the Kentucky Wildcat head coach. You, you bet. You would have liked a couple of those blitzes that you went after were going to get a sack, make a punt, and go in 16 to nothing. Little momentum change, and uh, I think John L. Smith, even though they got a little momentum change, is going to chew some people at halftime. Their head football coach and get on his five big guys on the offensive line. Well, I'll tell you what, I continue to bring pressure if I'm Guy Morris, certainly. Uh, so far, their defensive backs have done a wonderful job covering. And let's send it uh, down to Tracy Wolfson, who's standing by with the head coach of the Kentucky Wildcats. Well, Coach, your defense has been so strong all game just until that last drive. Obviously not the way you want to go into half, but pretty good score right now, huh? Well, we'll it'll do for now, but, you know, we're going to go in, uh, get some fans straightened out. The big late hit on the quarterback didn't help us at all. I think that gave them a little bit of momentum, so we got to come back in the second half and take it back. Great. Good luck in the second half, Coach. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, I'll tell you what, this is a huge upset in the making. The Kentucky Wildcats leading 16 to 7 over number 18, Louisville. Let's send it to the studio and Reese Davis. Mark. Louisville trailing Kentucky 16 to 7. Dave Ragone, I'll tell you what, he deserved the second half rest. He has been beaten and battered in this first half. Somehow picked himself off the ground and managed to get this Cardinal team into the end zone for at least one touchdown. You know, Mark, and I wouldn't be surprised if he went and said, okay, guys, we, you know, we had our troubles in the first half, and Dave gets to the offensive line and say, you're new. We're trying to gel and work together and get this thing going. There you see the numbers. Again, not alarm, not big numbers, but that average gain per play, the one that sticks out right here, Mark. Yeah, it's horrible. Yep. Yeah, it's just horrible. Passing yards, 67. Most of that came on the final drive. They converted twice on fourth down. I think I can hear John L. Smith yelling. <laughs> yeah. From the uh, locker room at halftime because uh, I'll tell you what, it was not a very good performance, especially from his offensive line, of which they have four new starters. So we're underway in the second half. Kentucky kicking off. Roderick Clark takes it about three yards deep, and he's out. He's got the sideline to the 40-yard line. Can he get the corner of the half to 40, 30, 20? He's gone. Louisville opens the second half with a touchdown. 100 yards on the play, and that is a school record. Oh, how quickly things can change. I think John L's speech at halftime works. <laughs> that's called responding, and that's why they're a top 20 team right now, Mark. They know how to respond. We talked about offense. We talked about the defense trying to come up big to turn this game around, but it's been now the third phase of football, the special teams. It comes up big. The first play of the second half, a 100-yard kickoff return to make it 16-13. Cut it to two points with this extra point if it's good. Nate Smith, the junior. It's up, and it's through. And we've got ourselves a ball game. The Cardinals now. Down by two, 14-16 over the Cats. 
It's Louisville's first 100-yard kickoff return since 1968. And, Mark, you want a guy who hits it north and south on special teams. Sees the hole, no wasted motion. Great block, nice job. Nobody's touching him. To the house, a little over 100 yards. What a great job of not wasting the space that he's given. Have a look-see now, get down the sidelines, get themselves some good blocks. That's just flat-out speed, but that is smart getting north and south and not dancing around on a special teams play. Great way for Louisville to start the second half. There have been three 100-yard kickoff returns in school history prior to this. The last one by Mike Blakely versus Drake back in November of 1968. And Guy Morris now somehow has to get his football team back in this game. This is the last thing he wanted to see. Well, you're not kidding. you got a good thing going. But now momentum definitely switched. We saw the touchdown by Louisville at the end of the first half on great play by Ragone. And now we see special teams. Like I said, great teams know how to respond. And there you see about score to points, you, Mark. You talk about people who can make great adjustments at halftime. Sean, and right. you and I have been in enough locker rooms in the halftimes of football games that the good ones can find ways to adjust and get their football teams back on track. And that was a quick adjustment, too. That was also Clark's first career touchdown in college. That's one he'll remember, a 100-yard kickoff return. And this one taken on the goal line by Abney. Kentucky, a right return. He's got some room. Finally, turns it back inside. Several Cardinal players in on the stop. 30 yards on the return. And I'll tell you what a wonderful, wonderful way to start the second half of this football game. It has just been so hard to watch Dave Ragone be battered. But this, you can just feel the spirits of this team being uplifted by that kickoff return. That, that'll help that first half tail whip. And I'll, I'll tell you what, it's amazing how much adrenaline you'll get yeah. feeding off the special teams, which inev inevitably always come up big in a big game, Mark. So the Wildcats take over, first and 10 on the 30. Lorenzen, the dump pass and swing out to the left side. Pinner, Artus Pinner, who had the big first half, 13 yards on the reception. Mark, all this is is an extension of the run game. A little quick swing pass, a little screen mixed in. Get it to Pinner right now. Let him get in space and run the football. He may not look 238 pounds, but that's how big he is. Runs, nice elusive run, just an extension of the handoff, very safe play. Dwayne White, the big defensive end, left him on block, just threw the ball over his head. Pinner had 33 rushing yards in the first half. And again, another carry here, his first of the second half, and he rambles forward. 14 yards on the game. Finally, Anthony Floyd, the free safety, brings him down. And when uh, your free safety is bringing you down, you know that you're doing a pretty good job in the running game. And you know, Mark, we talked about Louisville going in at halftime and coming on out here and, and changing momentum. And now look at Kentucky. Instead of going into the tank, they've answered. Pinner touches the ball twice on a little swing pass and a, and a run. There's those 14 rushes, and he's almost to pushing that 20 mark where they wanted to get him to. First to 10. 44-yard line. Pinner back up the middle again. And I credit Guy Morris, the head coach here, for not getting away from his game plan. He said, you know, we want to hammer him. We want to pound him. We want to soften up that defense and control the tempo of this game. And they managed to do that after the big kickoff. Return. And look at Hart. Shielding off Dwayne White, the All-American. Now, White gets in on the tackle, but not till there's a four-yard game and puts it in second six. And Harps obviously size-wise outweighed, but does a good job of getting in there and battling. Penner three touches in a row, Mark, and that's big for UK. And there's no reason to panic. You're still up by two points. Sit there and use up some clock. Keep her going over there on the sidelines. Bobby LaFue and Scott Lopez, the two defensive tackles, the ones that are getting moved out of there more than anybody right now. As we look at second and six. And again, this time. Alexis Begenge, the fullback, is stopped for a loss. Let's send it down to Tracy Wolfson. Well, you talk about Pinner and them wanting to give him more reps this year. Well, he says he wants to rush for 1,400 yards, and he says that's not out of his league. And running backs coach Gerald Carter agrees. He says that the NFL can have this guy. He is an NFL caliber guy. He's bulked up, and he shaved his run time down to a 4-5. 4-5, 238 pound backs have a place in the National Football League. Thank you, Tracy. Lorenzen, 
on the little slide screen back inside to Derek Abney, but Louisville shuts him down only one yard on the play. That's a nice job of tackling by the Louisville defense, and we said that's about number five or six screens, Mark, and I know they wanted to get to double figures, did Kentucky, screening the ball. Even though it was not a big game, you still give yourself a manageable third down, and Louisville one of the best in the nation, and there's, excuse me, we're at fourth down now, and uh, the question is, do you go for it, do you punt? No panic, probably punt it away. Yes, so it is fourth down, fourth and six. Nice job on third down by Louisville to, to force this punt. We bring Pakalak out on the football field. Got a touchback previously, 44 yards. He's averaged 41-2 on the Knights. And we have a flag, obviously a delay of game call. Prior to snap, delay of game, offense. Five yard penalty in the previous spot, go fourth down. And you folks at home, this punter has got such a strong leg, they've done that twice now. They want to move him back so he doesn't have to just pooch it so he can get his foot into this thing. So the Ray Guy watch list, the number three punter in the NCAA coming into the season, and he hits a high one. It's out of bounds around the 10-yard line. They're going to spot it at about the 9-yard line, and that's where Louisville is going to take over possession. 36 yards on the punt, and Dave Ragone, who just got hammered in the first half, We'll go back out and see what he can do in the second half. Yeah, Mark, and you see these, and we don't see any sacks right here in this video. We see a lot of hits. Now, I know he's been sacked a couple times, but these start to take their toll because what happens is you start to feel like you get, got, got to get the ball out quicker, right. which disrupts timing. You feel like, oh, my gosh, they gotta, I got to make something happen, and it causes problems. If the hits take their toll, and even though you're an All-American quarterback, it can hurt you. Not surprising they come out in too tight formation and run the football early in this one. Lionel Gates gets the carry. And again, it's not for a yard. It's not surprising that they come out of two tights trying to run the football. But even if they're going to pass it, that's a good formation because you can give some help now to that offensive and, line. And you can pass out of it. You give you guys a, really another offensive lineman with a tight end that can protect. And Ragone has been knocked to the ground 13 times in this game. That's too many in a full game. But you know what? He's also been hit a bunch more times. So they can't take the toll, but he is a battler. The wide receivers have not done a great job of getting open against man coverage. Kentucky lines up again in man coverage. Ragone has to hold, waits, the post corner. The flag is thrown. We might have a holding call, but we do have a catch. Dante Spielman, the junior college transfer, comes up with a catch out about the 31-yard line. Mark, thing of beauty. I know we're going to get to this flag here and let the referee make his call. We'll get a chance to talk about this. We suspect that we're going to get a holding call on Kentucky, but let's see. Holding on an Fine, they'll take the results of the play. First down. Again, this is the second time now they've gotten Kentucky corners on the post corner move. Sean. And they're going to come and sell it, Mark, and they get back to the corner. Sell it, now get back to the corner. But look at the nice height on the ball that gives him a chance to adjust to it. Put a little air under it, let your guy run to it. Beautiful route, but also a nice pitch and catch. That ball was out of his hand way before Spielman came out of the route. So it's now a three wide receivers right, shotgun formation. Under pressure again, he rolls out, gets rid of the ball, but we have a flag. And it's in the area of a holding call on an offensive lineman. And that's exactly what we have, early indications. From Jim Lapatina, the head official here, head referee of a Big Ten officiating crew. Kentucky trying to figure out what they want to do here. Let's listen to the call. Personal foul, hands in the face on the offense. Half the distance to the goal line. Let's go first time. You know, Mark, I've been you know, critical in the first half of this, this offensive line with right. four new guys. It's difficult to get into a rhythm, but you also have to take some responsibility and also a new offensive line coach. Right. I mean, they added a coach too, so right. everybody's trying to get uh, in a rhythm, and Coons is the only guy who returns at center. But there comes a point in time when you got to start to step it up and say, we got to communicate more because they're having a hard time. And it's not only four new starters, but Jason Spitz and Jason Weathers are alternating drives at the right guard position. So in such, you got five new guys. Right. So again, not a lot of continuity on the offensive line. First and 26 for a go. 
down deep. The skinny post to number 18, Spielman. He comes up big again, and this is close to a first down out at, over the 40-yard line. Looks to be about 25 yards on the game. That time, plenty of time for Ragon, and you can see what he can do. You know, Mark, what I like about this is the timing. We're going to come down. We're going to run a skinny post. But watch Ragon set up and get the ball out of his hand right when he puts his foot back there. Set down, put your foot in the ground, and throw it. Nice skinny post. Receiver gives him room inside there before the safety comes over. Excellent job. Lionel Gates with the carry on first and ten. He doesn't pick up much. No gain on the play. And again, one of the things that will help Ragone and help this offensive line is start winning on first down. We've seen them in a lot of second and longs, third and 20s. You know, you do that over and over again, you're not going to win football. Yeah, games. you could put an all-pro offensive line in there, and when you're in third and long, we don't have a lot of plays in the playbook, and it's very difficult to block more guys than there is. Second down and 10. The Cardinals trailing by two. Hard count by Ragone. A sweep action. Lionel Gates picks his way for about five or six. That was a better job on the left side of the line, Mark, saying, you know, it's time. We've been, been pushed back all the time in the run in the pass. Give ourselves some separation. You saw Gates, who's obviously their best running back in the open field. Get out there and move it. Get yourself a third down. And what have we got here? About five yards, four yards? Third and five. five yep. Third and five. Morris Lane on the stop. Good job that time of the pulling guard. Antoine Sims, number 64. They are two of nine on third down conversions tonight, the Cardinals are. Ragone bobbles the shotgun snap. Can't find anybody. Scramble, scrambling, looking for the first down. Picks his way through and battles his way like a linebacker over the 45 and down to the 44-yard line. First down, Cardinals. If you don't know anything about football, and you just tuned in to watch, and you're watching Rago, and, you're, and you've seen him in this game, you don't even know anything about how tough this is because you're watching him, one of the tougher guys you'll see. Low snap again, it's happened three or four times. Stays with it, his head is up the field. When he finally decides to commit to the run mark, he does. Big body like that, people bouncing off. It's a tremendous performance, a gutty performance. We tuned in, and most part, people around the country probably did to see him throw the ball. He hasn't been able to do that, but he's found a way to move this football team. First and ten. Over the middle, Aaron throw, interception. An interception by Quintus Cumbie, but there is a flag on the play. We might have a defensive holding here. That one got away from going a little bit, but I think you're right, Mark Holden. They're going to think they got a little hold. Yep, grabbing Ronnie Gent, the tight end over the middle. Hard to believe that Ragone would throw a ball in an area like that where you don't see a receiver at all unless he was drugged down by a defender. Holding. On the defense, holding eligible seat, except line, 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic, first down. Well, you wonder whether or not when you see that, whether it's catchable. But there we go, right here. You see the jersey being yep. grabbed right there, Mark? Yep. That's Ronnie Riley, the inside linebacker on Jet. There you see it, grabbing jersey. That's a good call by the official. You know, sometimes you get to the point say, I can't hold him, I can't stop him, I'll try to hold him. And Riley is a smart kid. Fifth-year senior, the middle linebacker who missed all of last year with that ACL, but again beaten. He did everything he thought he could do, and then grabbed the jersey. So it's first and ten. Going, looking to the sideline. Nice catch by number 88, Victor Glenn. Good enough for a first down. 13 yards on the reception. Now this is what you're used to seeing if you're used to watching Louisville in the past. Goes up, runs that route, comes back down the sideline, Mark. Good quarterback throws it over there, gives this guy a chance. But these young receivers are now starting to find a way to work their way back to the quarterback and create some separation and coverage. And I like Ragone, even though he's had trouble with these wide receivers and they haven't done a good job of getting open, he's throwing the ball on time. He's trusting. You look at this drive, 3 for 3, 60 yards. The first half, 8 of 21, 67 yards. And most of that came on the final drive, the touchdown drive just before half. Play action, bootleg right. This is all run. Ragone will not go down. You're not going to see this guy hook slide. He picks up about three yards on the play. You're also not going to see him try to step on that white marker out of bounds. <laughs> he feels like he, he feels like he could take on anybody. And I said earlier, and I'll say before, he said if you wanted to slide, go play baseball. 
He's got an opportunity to go out of bounds. He says, nope, my teammates are going to do it, so am I. Let me compete, get you a couple more yards. That's Dave Ragone. If you're a bunch of pro scouts are here tonight, Mark, I'm telling you what, you see what, what a good quarterback is when they're, when, when they're not having their best game as an offense. Dave Ragone, 37 yards rushing the rest of the team, eight. This guy can't get it done throwing because of the offensive line and the receivers, so he takes it in his own hands, and he runs the football. Second down and eight. Back to pass. Has some time. That one slips out of his hands. He had a wide open. Dante Spielman coming across the middle of the field, and there is a flag on the play. Another hold defensively, perhaps? I think so. I think you're going to get another hold on Gent. Coming across the field in a little crossing route. It's not... But, Sean, this is what we talked about. The receiver's having trouble getting open. So what do we talk about at half between the two of us? Run more crossing routes, more rub routes. Allow these guys to find a way to get open. Oh, and there you see, Jeff. On the defense. Half the distance to the goal line. Automatic. First down. You saw right there in your picture. Jeff running. Been held twice. Haydick with the hold. You know, you get beat inside, and everybody's concerned on defense about Gent because he's been such a good receiver for this team, playing it at the tight end. It wasn't a catchable pass, but uh, they held him earlier than the pass was released. The tight end production team. fell off a little bit last year. Uh, he caught 34 balls for 330 yards, but they wanted to get a lot more out of the tight end position. They've done that in years past, and he's going to be a bigger part of this offense. That's Vincent Burns, number 98, the right defensive end of the Wildcats, who's being attended to right now on the field a couple holding penalties couple big plays by Ragone a return right coming out of the locker room at halftime and uh, Louisville looks a little bit more like the Louisville we expected to see even though they're still having trouble throwing it all right while they're tending to the player we'll take a break back after this fail 14 16 over the Wildcats but they're on the move on the 10 yard line first and goal Ragone Hands the ball off to number 28, T.J. Patterson, who picks up a couple. Mark, I know Ragone has had some success getting out and making plays, but I know John L. Smith, and they, they've got to find a way to get a little more production from the backfield backs and the offensive line getting some push. Because as the schedule goes on, it doesn't get any. They got Colorado State that's going to come up along the way here. Florida State. It's, it's not easy. Exactly. And again, you don't mind him getting out of the pocket by design. But when he's got to run for his life, that's a different matter. Second and goal now. From the shotgun. Spread formation. Blitz is on. The goal throws under pressure. Ball is tipped incomplete. Jeremy Caudell with the tip. Junior, six foot three, 297 pounds, had a pretty good game so far tonight. And Caudell and the rest of the UK defensive front has been taught well, Mark. If you can't get to the quarterback, get some arms up. A little inside push, get it up there. There you go. Play big, make the big fella go over the top of you. And even if they do get it out, you know what? It maybe comes out high. Nice job by Caudell. Tips the ball. That's time number three in this game. It's been tipped and, and that's no incomplete. Ragone's first incomplete pass of this drive. He's three for four, 60 yards. And this is third and goal from the seven. Blitz again, delayed up the middle. Ragone, double pumps and just overthrows Damian Dorsey, who was coming out the back door and was going to be wide open for a touchdown. Yeah, he's wide open. But I'll tell you this, there's Jen also wide open coming underneath there. We also had Dorsey the other way, but you know what? Don't blame that on the quarterback or the receiver because Caudell made a nasty lick on Ragone that forced the high throw. We're getting coached over there on the sideline, but you know what? When you get hit in the mouth that many times, it's tough to make every play. So Nate Smith comes on the field. His first field goal attempt was from 52 yards. It was a miss. This one from 24. And we have a whistle, a timeout by the University of Kentucky Wildcats. Guy Morris wants to talk it over. We're going to take a break, but we'll be back with a field goal attempt when we return. Got it a touchdown, but missed it. Here's why, Sean. Yeah, Mark, if you're big Jason Weathers and you're over 300 pounds, you can't open up the gate on the offensive side. Look, at he steps outside, allows 68 Caudell to come in and make the hit. There's the reason the throw's high. You can't step outside. you got to get a hit on that guy inside. You open up the gate. Let your quarterback get a hit and give away a touchdown to two wide open receivers. Well, Kentucky missed an extra point earlier. Otherwise, it would be 17. This for the lead. It'll be their first lead of the night if it's good. 
Nate Smith from 24 yards. It's up, and it's good. And Louisville takes their first lead of the evening, 17-16 over the Cats from Papa John Stadium. We'll take a break, be back with more action right after this. Entertaining the crowd as the Cardinals have found their way back on top by a point, 17-16 over the University of Kentucky. So after a 12-play, 84-yard drive, it took 5 minutes and 38 seconds to put the Cardinals back on top. Wade, Wade Tichlaka will kick off. Taken on about the 6-yard line by Arliss Beach. True freshman running back. He weaves his way back through the traffic and finally is brought down about the 40-yard line. Just a reminder, tomorrow, quarterback Gino Gadouli and the Cincinnati Bearcats open their Conference USA schedule as they host Adrian Matisse and the TCU Horned Frogs College Football on ESPN tomorrow at 4.30 Eastern time. For more information, you can log on to ESPN.com. Mark, you want, you want to see a good, tall quarterback? That Gino Gadouli is pretty good, too. Tune in to watch him tomorrow. That'll be fun. Seems like we're saying big quarterbacks on every team in I'll Division One, isn't it? Yeah, they're big, but I'll tell you what, Jared Lorenzen brings a whole new Prior definition to, to big. Offside, defense, five yard penalty, go first down. Mark, I, I'm very, very rarely feel dwarfed by a guy. I know I'm tired of. <laughs> I was down there talking to him during warmups. He's big, man. Oh, he's big. He, I mean, six four. He's not any taller than you or I. But eight for 14 in the first half. But again, pushing 300 pounds, he could be the biggest quarterback ever to play at this level in college football. It was, Laure it was Laurel and Hardy when I was standing next to him, buddy. <laughs> R2's pitter with a catch, uh, or the carry, excuse me, as we take a look at Lorenzen's first half. And again, you don't see him under center much. But this guy can do a little bit of everything. That a 64-yard scre uh, screen pass to Ernest Sims. But he's lead a foot. He is. And you know what? We guy like Bernie Kozar. You remember we watched Bernie yeah. play? The only reason I say that, didn't look like he was doing anything, but was able to buy time with his feet. And he did just that. The big fella can move around pretty good. Second and three. If he's 265 or 70 pounds, he'd be a much better football player. I think he's going to learn that over time. Pinner again with a carry. Stopped by Rod Day, the inside linebacker, number 40, a junior who is uh, one of the, uh, in fact, the only replacement on that Louisville defense from a year ago. Which is one of the best in America. Mark, you mentioned about Penner getting to that 25 carry point and 20 to 25, 30 touches. He's pushing that, which is going to keep Kentucky in the football game. No doubt, which is why they are only a point down. Three of ten on third down conversions for Kentucky, and Lorenzen sticks one in there tight to number three, Ernest Sims, and that's going to be good for a first down. Just a good timing, safe play. Although it's a little bit, little hitch, little slant route to the inside guy. Take a look at this, he's going to stop in zone, sit down. Lorenzo's is going to get it out of his hand, one, two, three. Sims sits down in zone before the linebacker gets out there, first down. Safe play, chain mover on the other half of the football field. And again, we're seeing Lorenzen play after play now up under the center. This is an interesting move by Guy Morris. A little plunge play up the middle to Pinner. It's a couple of yards. You know what I think the reason for is that, Mark, for that two-yard gain to Pinner is that, you know, you almost limit yourself in the gun when you're running. Absolutely. You limit yourself to some draws and some sweeps. Here now, you get under the center. You, you've had a little breeze rolling in the stadium, and so Lorenzen's not losing his breath. You've got more threat of a bunch of different runs with the zone plays with uh, Lorenzen under center. But if you're going to ask him to start throwing a lot from under center, you're going to get into a conditioning problem. This kid's going to get tired towards the end of the game, and it could be a factor. Just when we say that, he's in the gun. Second and eight now, three wide receivers. Plenty of time. And drives one down to Derek Abney. Abney, the junior, 5'10", 175, the best route runner. 11 yards on the catch, and Abney ranks seventh all-time in receptions for the University of Kentucky. I love this kid. When he walks in, Mark, 
There he is, the junior wide receiver. He walks into our meeting, and I feel like I'm looking at a kid who would bag your groceries. Exactly. But he's fast, he's competitive, and he was so excited on Friday to play in this football game. I'll tell you what, he is passionate about the game, and especially about this rivalry. Out of the shotgun, Lorenzen changes the protection. Louisville showing some blitz now. The defensive backs backing away. Plenty of room, steps up, under pressure, wide open. The completion to number 82, Chris Bernard, the junior college transfer, second team All-America from Saddlebrook College, 17 yards on the catch. And you know what? Lorenzo does another good job of buying time. He's got a great feel for the line of scrimmage. Here's a nice little pitch sitting out there. Look at the job by the receiver not to run inside the coverage, Mark. Against zone, stays out there, stays away from trouble. But look at Lorenzen. Step up there by time. Going to get a hit. Still got plenty of zip. Knew where the line of scrimmage was. That's a nice play by the big fella. First and 10, UK threatening now on the 17-yard line. The big fella back under the center. Pinner gets the ball. Bounces it to the right side. Picks up two or three before he's dropped. Four yards on the carry. Rod Day on the play, the inside linebacker. A little flag on the play. Oh, drive killers, that's drive what, killers. That's where they kill you, Mark, when you're in the red zone and you take yourself back. Illegal formation on the offense. You only had six men on the line of scrimmage of a snap. Five yard penalty from the previous repeat first down. You know, Mark, the accountability, you talk about six men on the line of scrimmage, they need another man up there. And although the guy's got to take responsibility, the quarterback still's got to take inventory and make sure that he's got his players set. And Guy Morris has got to be upset. An old offensive lineman who played 15 years in the NFL with the Philadelphia Eagles, went to the Super Bowl with the Eagles, coached for three years in the National Football League. That's just got to eat him And up. those are the things you can control, where you line up, and that's just a costly penalty for them. First and 15 now for the Wildcats, out of the shotgun. Little dash left. Renzen off his back foot, nobody there in the corner of the end zone. Either a miscommunication or Lorenzen just decided to throw it away. I'm not so sure the old Jared Lorenzen would have thrown that out of bounds, Mark. I like that. That's a that, that's a win. That is a win by the Kentucky Wildcats because he doesn't throw an interception, doesn't do anything stupid, and I think it was a good decision by him to make that throw. And it's his first incompletion of the second half, and you can say, well, hey, listen, it's an incompletion, but it does. It keeps the drive alive. You get a chance now, another two chances to pick up that 15 yards. That's why there's four downs in the league, Mark. You got three of them before you have to kick. Eyes the defense. Oh, little flip pass outside to avoid the pressure. That's Artus Pinner. We can both catch the ball and run the ball. That's good for seven yards, and they pick up almost half of the 15 they needed. And, Mark, that's just a little hot swing. They, 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 they blitz him with linebackers. He throws a little swing pass. And in talking to the coaches, they said last year Lorenzen really had no clue mentally. Right. Was a physical guy go out there and just make the throw. There's Brent Pease, his offensive coordinator in the second season, played quarterback in the National Football League himself. But now you can see with that pickup, Lorenzen has a clue mentally of what's going on on the football field. This half, Lorenzo, 6 of 7, 52 yards. Big third down. And about 8. Ball up. But nobody in the vicinity. Ball's incomplete. And that's going to bring out the field goal team. Kentucky thought they got held a little bit. But hey, you throw it away, you'll take these three points. Puts them back in the lead. And remember, Mark, let's go back now to the blocked extra point by Dwayne White. Right. That, that, that put him up 16 another would have been 17 and they left that one on the table did Kentucky could come back and get him so so Taylor Begley comes on the field to try a 32 yarder he's had one attempt tonight good from 41 yards out red shirt freshman the nerves of a senior he drills that one through and the Wildcats find themselves up on top again by 2, 19-17, the score with about one minute to play in the third. We talk about Dave Ragone, but I'll tell you what, the University of Louisville has produced some pretty good players, including offensive lineman Joe Jacoby, a former Cardinal, played with those great Redskins teams, and boy, did he come around on that counter trade play? And that's a 300-pounder getting oh. around a big guy who could run, was a big part of the Redskins 
Hogs, the big hogs up there winning Super Bowls. One of the first 300 pounders uh, to really run. Let's go down to Tracy Wolfson, who has uh, found the big fella. Tracy? Mark, talking a big fella, he's 6'7". I look like a midget compared to him right now. But, Joe, let's talk about first his offensive line. You know what it's like. They're a young squad. How, how hard is it to gel? Well, the hard part is that they're mixing, missing blitzes and stuff like that and communication amongst each other. And that's why you're seeing the quarterback take a lot of hits tonight. Well, let's talk about why you're really here. Your number was honored today. Congratulations. How does it feel? Well, thank you for the, the compliment, and uh, it's amazing. It's just, uh, you know, the years of playing, the comeback, and the success we had the, in the National Football League with the, the teams that I was on with the Redskins, and uh, to come back here, your hometown, play for your hometown school, and then to have your jersey honored like that. And it's just been great. It's been a great weekend here, and it's top it off. It'd be great to see a win tonight. Thanks a lot, Joe, and congratulations. Right, thank you. Bye-bye. All right, Tracy, thank you very much. I'll tell you what a heck of a football player. There is no doubt about it. One of the real good guys in Mark. He could, I, we played against Big Joe a number oh, of times. Yeah. And I, I, I mean, I wasn't very good, but I'll tell you what, with Big Joe on my team, I might have been better. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, Dave Ragon could use Big Joe Jacoby yes, he tonight, could. couldn't he? Even now, Big yeah. Joe make find a way to get it done. He sure would. All right, so the Cardinals and Dave Ragon take over. From the 20-yard line, first and 10, trailing by two in this game. Just a little over a minute to play in the third. And characteristically, plenty of time. Dumps it out to T.J. Patterson, and he stopped immediately, maybe a half a yard on the play. Mark, the thing that sticks out to me most about Kentucky's defense, obviously the pressure, but the way they've tackled. Once again, they only practiced twice all summer long in full gear so you wonder about the intensity but they're answering the call because they have wrapped up really well tonight and made sure there wasn't a whole lot of yards after the catch guy morris was concerned about how they might respond was really forced to do that because of the numbers probation he doesn't have as many kids but they have responded very well second and nine they're going out of the shot oh right in the hands of ronnie gent the tight end uncharacteristic of him to drop yep. a football like that mark that on your calendar because you won't see that very often but the ball gobbled him up a little mark he's very good at getting his hands out and catching it he let that thing get into his body and it ate him up a little bit and it bounced off his pads and when the ball's coming out that hard you got coverage on gotta get the hands out there and make the catch. he's been held tonight so, several times uh he's been open and he feels going. like shaquille o'neal yeah, can't get him the ball because of pressure <laughs> finally it all works out and he can't catch the football 39. Going in trouble, bobbles a snap, somehow escapes, picks up the first down, and he is out to about the 36 yard line. 16 yards on the broken play. This guy just doesn't give up. Yeah, you know what? You gotta, this is a good gun snap, but he just drops it. Watch him continue to play. Had his eyes up the field, that's why he dropped the ball, but he found a way to make it happen. I don't know how you describe the guy anymore than that. The guy's incredible. Continues to battle. He's made something out of nothing happen a lot. He dropped the ball, and it was his fault, but he makes something happen. The guy's incredible. Well, we're going to take a break as we end the third quarter, but we're back with more action. Kentucky leading 1917 over Louisville. Papa John Stadium, the Cardinals trailing Kentucky Wildcats 17 to 19 as we start the fourth and final quarter. First and 10 from the shotgun. Three receivers set left. The go down the middle, wide open. Great play by number two, the free safety Quintus Cumbie breaks up a potential touchdown. The intended receiver, Damian Dorsey. Routes good, just getting right down the seam. A little bit too much touch on this one, Mark. You throw that ball down, Dorsey just run a straight seam route, puts his arm up looking for the ball, hung up there a little too long. Great reaction by the Kentucky secondary. If that ball's thrown on a line, that is a touchdown for Louisville. You won't see we're going under throw many of those. Cumbie lays out. If he misses that, that's six. Second and ten now. Under center. Go. Finds Dorsey on the slant route. 
Dorsey says the hardest thing for Dave has been his ability to see me. He's only five foot seven inches. That's good for 11 yards and a first down. Now this is the way you play up front. Everybody steps down. So is the way the big blitz inside by the linebackers. Hat on a hat, helping your partner out. Gets the nice slant route. Nice pitch and catch. But that's the reason they can get rid of the ball, Mark. Even though it's a slant and it's short, you should be able to. The guys up front, the big five up front, do a nice job of letting Ragone stand back there and throw. That didn't even look like the same offensive line sure we didn't. saw down around the end zone a couple of series ago. First and ten from the 48-yard line. Going back to pass. Drills one. The skinny post. Is it good? No. They say incomplete. Dante Spielman can't haul it in. The junior college transfer to get a sense of how strong Ragone's arm. That thing was a laser. Yeah, it was. A little, little quicker. He might have got it a little too far inside, but man alive, it came out. Nice route by Spillman. And the reason you got an opportunity to push this down the field, just missed, almost made the catch, is once again the protection was outstanding. That ball right there hits the ground. There's no doubt the ball bounced. Good call by the officials. And great adjustment by John L. Smith, the head coach. Now they're getting wide receivers open. The ball's getting out in time. Here's a run. Lionel Gates off the right side to change things up. This looks like a loss of about a yard. Yeah, and Mark, for as much as we you know, criticize that offensive line, boy, these last two or three plays, they've decided to suck it up and get out there and make things happen and realize that we've got to take some accountability, and it's given Ragone a chance to push that ball down the field. Vincent Burns, who was attended to a little earlier in the game late in the third quarter, comes up with a play. So he's found a way to get back on the football field. And now the Cardinals face a third and 12. I'll bet you you see pressure, Mark. Shotgun. Three wide receivers. And here comes the blitz. He had the time. He had open Victor Glenn, probably not for the first down, but threw it behind him. A little pressure through it behind him. Now the line's giving him a little time to throw, and he got a little bit out of sync. Maybe he's a little shocked that he has this much time to throw. Kentucky holds, Mark. That's huge by them. It is. That'll bring on Tichlajka. Last kick, 19-yarder out of bounds. He shanks it. His average for the night just over 33 yards. Cardinals need a big kick here to play the field position game. And it's an end over end. Into a scrum. The ball is loose. No decision yet by an official. Louisville says they have it. Official looking for some help. And I don't see a flag. Didn't, there's that two-yard halo mark. I don't see a flag, and it looked like they might have gotten that two-yard halo. I still don't see a call either. The halo is the space around the receiver. He's got to have enough room to make the catch without being impeded. Now, it was his own team that seemed to be infringing on that two-yard halo. Sean. And remember, that's a judgment call by those guys down there on the field. And he got to let his two guys that are back there protect him get a little bit too close. But we still don't know who recovered the fumble. We got some officials making the call, and there has not been a flag thrown. So they're not talking penalty. I think they're talking recovery. Jail Smith wants to get involved in the conversation. And again, not a particularly good kick, but it was end over end, kind of a knuckleball. Tijlatka has not done well tonight in punting the football. That one was only 31 yards. But you can see right here, his own player trying to get out of the way, and that ball is loose. Yeah, and It both, is loose. There's no question about it, Mark. And those two players, you got to have the discipline to know that you've got to give your guy room to catch the football. They got too far back into his face, made it almost impossible for Abney to make the catch. The backup tight end, Richard Owens, recovered the fumble. The ball did not hit the receivers of the Kentucky's ball. First down. Let's so take. the ruling is that the punt never touched a Kentucky player before the Cardinals recovered it as we take another look. I don't know if we'll see it from this angle. Tell you what, if it didn't touch them. Wow. They got away with it. That's a That's lot of close. bodies for it. Here's another to touch look anything. from a different angle. Uh, yes, it, it does. Did. It touches number 35, Travis Atwell. They got away the with it. Ball one. touches Travis Atwell before it is recovered by the Cardinals. Unfortunately, as we see flags fly here, there isn't a review play. This is not the I National Football League. Ball starts. Offense. 
Five yard penalty, go first down. And, and Mark, in talking about that, the one that hit, and hopefully we'll get a chance to see it again, is that when there's four bodies around it, normally if the ball's not hit, it takes a bounce, it goes everywhere. Right. The ball would stop dead almost like a ballada golf ball, and we saw the replay, hits him right in the belly. Take a look now at number 36. It's gonna hit him on the left side of your screen. 30, yeah. It's gonna hit him right in the belly. Comes up. Another angle you could see it from, but hit him in the belly blatantly. That was a fumble. Kentucky got away with one there. Big 10 officials in the game. Big They've done a good job most they of the have. game, Mark. Jim Lapatina and his staff. Matter of fact, that might be the first botched call as far as blatant goes that I've seen in the ball game. They've done an excellent job, but that one they missed. It should not be the difference one way or another, another in this football game. It's a two-point game right now. Kentucky leading by two with just under 13 minutes to play. And this will bring up a second and 13 for the Wildcats. Must have an illegal procedure call. Prior to the snap, ball start, offense. Five, three, seven, nine. Take a look here. He's going to say Dwayne White's going to jump in there. And he's going to jump. There you go. You think you're a little scared of 99? Might be, but I guess I would be too. That's Antonio Hall jumping a little bit. And with Dwayne White, a lot of guys jump, Mark. There's no doubt, but I'll tell you what, Jared Lorenzen jumped in his offensive lineman's face. He realizes how critical this drive is, deep in their own territory, trying to drive out of this hole. Four wide receivers. They're changing the play here. A little five yard out. Incomplete. Intended for Abney. Lorenzo trying to communicate, telling those guys up front. You saw him, you saw him checking around, trying to direct traffic. And like we said earlier, a year ago, mentally they said he had no clue. Right. And so he's a little bit more in charge and understands how important the mental side is at that position. He told us when we sat down with him in the production meeting, he says, you guys drop anything you want to on the board. He says, I can tell you what it is. I can tell you how to break it down, how to protect it, how to throw it against. He was a very confident young man. Nine months ago, he wouldn't have been able to. You're exactly right. Man. Third and 18. Four for 13 third down conversions for the Cats in this ball game. Lorenzo out of the shotgun. Plenty of time. What a shot. Finds a way to squeeze it into Tommy Cook down the right sideline. That's good for 32 yards, and that was close to being 60 the other way. They, they said one thing about Tommy Cook. He catches everything. The key to the protection is look at the top of your screen. You're getting a double by the guard and the tackle. Dwayne White gets nowhere close. Nice big pocket for Lorenzen. Steps up, throws a laser shot, and that's a long throw in college football. Clear across the field. Nice job by Cook to use his body to shield the corner. Gets himself a chance. Big, big first down. So a new set of downs at the 46. High formation. And again, back work in the running game. R2 spinner. Number 20 picks up three yards. And Mark, the reason why that's bigger, this Louisville defense the last two years has been as dominant as any in NCAA. They're in the top three or four in almost every category in, in pass coverage. And right there in, in, in scoring defense and interceptions and takeaways. But that big third down play can be a backbreaker. And what a nice pitch and catch by Lorenzen and Cook. That was a long, long comeback throw. Spent a long time in the air and was close to being an interception. But Again, a huge third down conversion. Second and seven. Play action. Lorenzen finds his receivers covered, pulls it down, and just goes to the ground. Swarmed by the Louisville defense. And there's the difference between Lorenzen and Ragone. Ragone gives himself a little more time, gets to the sideline, cuts it back in. But Jared just doesn't have that straight ahead speed that allows him to get to the sideline. Marcus Jones, Bobby LeFew in on the stop. And Lorenzen has enough agility to make people miss, make yep. that initial guy miss, but he doesn't have enough to outrun people. Yeah, That's he, the difference. He's not going to beat me and you in the 40, but I'll tell you what, there you see the pressure. Both these guys are under pressure. Lorenzen less than Ragone, but both of them have been knocked down 
and Lorenzo, you see nine times the has been a double figure knockdown. Four sacks for the Louisville defense, third and ten. Under pressure, under pressure, back across the middle of the field. But no, Abney says he caught it. The official says no, incomplete. What a throw. Lorenzen going to his left, stopping, throwing back across the field, which we have been taught all our lives don't ever do. Don't do it. It's one of those. <laughs> no, no. Got it in. Yeah, it's one of those. Don't throw. Oh, nice throw. Nice <laughs> throw. Oh, to be young and have a strong arm. A little bit of a wobbler gets there from that angle. Can't tell if he got his arm under it. Abby was adamant about the fact that he did, but guess what? Refs say no. They're going to punt. Ten minutes to go in this game. Glenn Pakalak. Glenn Pakalak is back. His last punt, 32 yards. This one, a good one. Down to, oh, it's fumbled. The ball is fumbled. Kentucky's Anthony it, Floyd could not hold on to it. And Kentucky is going to take the ball. Mike Williams with a recovery. What a big play. Mark, I'm not so sure. You see Williams is getting blocked, but I'm not so sure the returner didn't feel him take his eye off the ball, hits him in the chest, loses it. Williams with enough sense to jump on the ball, being the first man down the field. That's why every single play you've got to hustle on special teams. So Louisville has the ball bounce against them with a bad call on the earlier punt. And now this time drop the punt reception, and Kentucky takes over with the turnover from the 19-yard line up two points over the Cardinals. Pinner, every time they get the ball, every time they have a big conversion and they move the chains, they turn and hand the ball to R2 Spinner. And they expect him to do this all season long, Mark, and with 238 pounds of bulk and some quick, shifty moves, I think he can carry it. He's showing us why he believes and has said that he's going to be a big time runner and pushing that as Tracy said earlier thinks he can get to 1400 yards this year in a tough SEC conference too picks up a yard on that second and nine power eye slot left Louisville crowding the line of scrimmage eight people in the box Lorenz it back to the flats incomplete Mark can't make that throw that was dangerous good thing for a strong arm Great coverage, but he had the he had him undercut. And I know Lorenzen's trying to be safe, but uh, you got to read it out honestly. A lot of times quarterbacks come and premeditate it and throw where they want to at the line of scrimmage without reading it out. But that's a dangerous, dangerous throw. Mike Campe is the intended receiver. Lorenzen, 13 of 23 for 195 yards and a touchdown, but he's been sacked four times. And this is where he's had problems late in football games. When he gets tired because of his weight, when the mechanics start to fall apart a little bit, and he makes bad decisions, at least that has been his M.O. in the past. And you know how it goes, Mark, that when you're physically tired, you become a mental coward at times. We all do. The key is to be able to overcome that and, and try to. He says he's in the best shape of his life, so maybe that conditioning will pay off for him. But this team's also been criticized, has Kentucky, of being a team that cannot close in the fourth quarter. They've had chances last year, had a chance against Tennessee. To win football games and they have not been able to close and they got a chance now against the seventh or 18th ranked louisville in somebody else's house to put a game at least put it close to putting it away and giving them some trouble so they start the play clock and it's third and nine guy morris and lorenzen talk it over lorenzen lines up the shotgun flushed out of the pocket on the run to the left throws it in the back of the end zone incomplete that is a smart football play. I know it's third down. People say we want points, but he throws it away, throws it up there. If somebody gets lucky and catches it, but you keep your team in field goal range. Now, if they make this, it's going to take a touchdown. You've got to like this. He sits some pressure. Wonderful decision by Lorenzen. Don't criticize at home. Good job. Realizes I'm not taking a sack. He would have made it a 48-yard field goal. Instead, I'm going to give my field goal kicker a better chance because now the difference in a touchdown and a field goal. So that brings on Taylor Begley. He's been good from 41 and 32. This one is from 34 yards out. To put the Wildcats up by five. It's up. And it's no good. Wide right.
So, the Cardinals dodge a bullet. John L. Smith, dodge a bullet. We're gonna go to break, we're back after this. And the Louisville Cardinals, ranked number 18th in the country, hosting the University of Kentucky Wildcats. The Cats find themselves on top by two, 19-17. As Dave Ragone and the Cardinals take over after a missed field goal from the 20-yard line, first and 10. Let's get you caught up with the second half action. The Cardinals trailing 16-7, open up the third quarter on the first play with Broderick Clark, deep from his own end zone, returns it to the right side, a 100-yard kickoff return, ties a school record. Dave Ragone, which struggled in the first half, been hit in the second half, 5 of 12. 72 yards has, find a way, has found a way, whether it's through passing or running, to get this football team in the end zone. They're trying to change the tempo with the no huddle now, Mark. That ball overthrown. And that's going to bring up a third and 10. Mark. They they do I'm sorry, Sean, they dodged the bullet again with a missed field goal. They have an opportunity here. They don't want to go three and out. Right, and they're going with no huddle. It's not one of those quick no huddles or hurry ups. They're just trying to change the substitution situation. The offensive line's done a much better job. First half, 18 hurries, Mark. The second half, only three hurries. So they've come to play here in the second half has Louisville's offensive line. Looks like a different unit, doesn't it? It certainly does. Well, they've got a spread offense here. Empty backfield, shotgun, four wide receivers. And here comes the blitz. They're going under pressure. Has no place to go. Number two, Quintus Cumby. The free safety, right up the middle, unblocked. Unaccounted for in the blocking scheme. You know, sometimes, Mark, sometimes on a blitz, you kind of time it if you're a defensive guy and hope you hit it without going off sides. And he does an awesome job. Look at this. They're coming through here, coming through here, coming here. Watch Cumbie here coming through. Boop! Nobody touches him. That's on the quarterback, but Dave had no chance to even set his feet. Great timing by the blitzer. Sack. Going to have a change of possession here. So Louisville will now have to kick. Wade Tidlachka, last kick, a 31-yarder, no return. Remember, you had that fumble. And this one almost blocked. In fact, they might have gotten a piece of it. It spirals out of bounds at about the 37, 38-yard line. 29 yards on the punt before it goes out of bounds, and he has not been reliable. Dion Holtz, number 64, the redshirt freshman, gets the hand on the ball. Take, we take another look. Take a look at this freshman getting blocked also, Mark, right here down the middle, getting blocked, getting blocked. But look at that. He uses the one free arm to get it up. Once again, Kentucky's done a great job of using their arms. Look how long it takes him to get this ball off. You're kicking from your own end zone. That ball has got to be gone. Yep. Holtz didn't allow himself to be blocked. Great effort. So this could change the game around. Lorenzo comes right out, tries to get the ball into the flat. The ball is incomplete. A great fortune for Kentucky. They, they get the kick run back on him on the opening play of the second half. But they've dodged some bullets here and still find themselves with a two-point left. Lead 1917. Okay, Mark. We've, we've, the fourth quarter's been no good to Lorenzen in his most of his career. 12 of 20, you see in the first three quarters. Only one completion out of six attempts here, coming down the stretch of the fourth quarter. Again, it's his mechanics. If you watch it, mechanics break down. It's tired. He says he doesn't, but you, you can see it. When you carry 300 pounds, it ain't easy. No, it's not that, easy. There's no question about it. If you're just joining us. We're here in Derby City, Papa John Stadium. Kentucky versus number 18, Louisville. And right now, Louisville looks to be shocked. Down by two against the Wildcats, who are on probation. Mark Malone, along with Sean Salisbury, Tracy Wilson, Mark, our sideline reporter. We talked about special teams. The kick returned by Louisville, the block kick on an extra point by Louisville, and the missed field goal by Kentucky. Inevitably, we better get a timeout here front of that. Inevitably, special teams seem to always rear their head when you got a big game, and it's killed Kentucky tonight. All right, while Lorenzen takes a timeout and discusses it on the sideline, we're going to take a little break, but back with more action right after this. Barry, as the Wildcats uh, find themselves up 
by two, 19-17 over Louisville, and this is a very critical third down play, Sean. There's no question about it. You know you're going to put him in the gun to prevent the sack, Mark, at least try to, but it's a good decision. If they play man, good time to run some picks and get a guy trailing underneath. Well, this is third and short. It's five yards or less. They're two and four, two of four in these situations. Sims in the slot's got man coverage. Renzen is going to tuck it and run. Can you bring him down? What a load. It looks like he's going to be short just over the 30-yard line. Needed to get to the 31 for the first down. Now, Mark, what he's done there, even if they don't get the first down, he's at least made the field goal attemptable, if that makes any sense. You get a chance now in that 46, 47-yard range. But now Morris faces this. You say, I'm trusting my defense. We played great. Let's go in there. We're up by two. Let's go in there and try to get this on fourth down. Or do you say, give me that and make them score a touchdown well, on the other here's end? Here's the other interesting thing. We saw earlier, we saw Lorenzen on a quarterback sneak when it was short yard Going situation. in the red zone. When you yep. got a 300-pound quarterback, it's not a bad option to go ahead and call the sneak and go ahead and get this guy falling forward. And, and I can assure you, the 11 guys on offense and the offensive line say, we got to go for it. we got to go for sure. it. This is one of those things that it almost builds your, your confidence for the rest of the season, saying this is what we do. They're going to be about a football shy, Mark. And now it's... It, and I'll tell you what, you've got a freshman kicker who just missed his last field goal attempt. I'm right here, given the fact you're coming off a 2-9 season, you're on probation, you're hoping that your appeal for a bowl ban will come through in November for you. I say you go for I it. I do, too. You've got a big guy, R2 spinner, and if you want to get with the quarterback, do that. You know, you're risking it a 47-yard field goal. I know that the field goal gets you up by a touchdown. I'd love the call. Show your team some guts, and let's go after it. Okay, they're one for one on fourth downs tonight. Louisville shifting their defense. It looks like a quarterback sneak to me, and that's exactly what it is. And look at the big fella push the pile forward. It looked like they stopped him initially, but I think he got enough for the first down. Yep, and that's the time when Guy Morris says, I'm so glad I threw out the scales <laughs> because I got some push from the big man using that backside and those legs. And that extra push got it, Mark. That's a first down. Nice gutsy call on those guys. up. This just builds that camaraderie and confidence for your offensive line throughout the rest of the season, saying, I believe in you guys. Let's see. There was a refrigerator Perry in the National Football League. What are we going to call this guy? Icebox, man. <laughs> Full of food, too. Take a look at that. Pushing, pushing away, getting it in there. A lot of beef. I like the second effort. That is a first down. <laughs> Just a warning there to the Kentucky sideline. No penalty on the play. John L. Smith, the head coach of the Cardinals, looks on, looking for his defense to come up big. Fresh set of downs from the 28-yard line. Screen. Screen. Oh, almost an interception by the Cardinals. Again, this football team has not been able to come up with a big turnover on defense. And we have a flag on the play. Michael Brown was the man who almost came up with a pick. And that's exactly what the Cardinals needed in this situation. Unsportsmanlike conduct on the Cardinals. This is going to hurt. Play with Dover. Dead ball. Unsportsmanlike conduct on a defense. Get this is the goal line. Automatic first down. Well, a little ticky tack there. Yeah, and aside from the unsportsmanlike conduct call, when you go back to Lorenzo's decisions, we, we talked about his inability to want to throw the check in or play smart. He's done a good job of it this game. That one could have cost him. Now they got the penalty, it would have been erased. But you got to be careful in throwing balls that you think you can stick in when you can't. But that is a huge penalty. Huge. Five straight incompletions for Lorenzo. He has had trouble with his stamina in the fourth quarter. Only one of his last eight balls has he completed. Missed a little dive play up the middle. Worked so wor uh, well early on. That's Ronald Johnson, number 41 with a the carry. There you see offensive coordinator Brent Pease 
First thing he's thinking is we must come away with points, Mark. We need it because if we can get a field goal, now they have to score a touchdown. But if we can come away with a touchdown, the way our defense has played, I expect Brent Peace to still be a little bit aggressive. You got this. Why not challenge this out here, Mark, when you got man throw a fade route to this kid? Lorenzen instead pitches right to Pinner, who bangs his way up to about the 10 yard line, just short of the 10. That's a quarterback talking, Mark. When there's man, you know, I like man. Hey, I'll take I, those chances. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the same formation with you, Sean, and I believe the same thing. You got a guy sitting out on the island out there. You got a big time quarterback with a big time arm and a guy like Abney who led the team in receptions a year ago who you trust who you know will make a play for you and won't allow the interception. No doubt and if you're Brent Pease and there's coach Guy Morris and Brent Pease calls the plays the offensive coordinator you know what don't be too conservative if you're going to run run left and get in the center of the field but you know what don't be afraid to take your chances and be smart about it. Third and seven the pitch playing for the field goal perhaps Pinner banging away inside the 10, but it's not going to be enough for the first down. There's, you know, there's, this is no brainer. You have to kick now, Mark. You got to get that six, five point lead and to you give yourself a chance to hold it. Trust your defense. You cannot go for this. You've knocked considerable time off the clock, and the clock continues to tick at 444 and counting. And you can bet that Guy Morris is going to take as much time as he possibly can. Kentucky finally taking the time out here, it looks like. And you know, Mark, you think on the on that last play, I was talking about running to your left to get it in the center, but with the field goal kicker, the left footer must uh, love it on the right hash because of the old draw that goes left to right. They probably wanted him to get it on this hash because that's where he likes to kick from instead of the center of the Well, field. he's two for three. He's good on a 41 and 32, missed the 34. This from 26 yards. And we have a flag. Tell you what, you work and work. Still fourth down. The clock is starting to snap. You work and work to get down there. You get a couple of things that go your way. You knock some time off the clock. You get down there where you feel real comfortable for your kicker. And then you allow something stupid like that to happen. No doubt about it. We saw that game Michigan and Washington where the Michigan kicker answered after missing one. Good opportunity for Kentucky to do the same today. Kentucky, 11 penalties tonight for 79 yards. This one from 30 yards out, and it's good. 31 officially, the field goal for Taylor Begley. And that puts the Wildcats up 22-17, forcing the Cardinals to have to score a touchdown with a little more than four minutes left in the fourth quarter. We're going to take some time here, but we'll come back with the remaining minutes of this football game. Louisville trailing the Wildcats 22-17 in what has been a shocker. Just over four minutes left in the fourth quarter. Dave Ragone, the Heisman hopeful, will now try to lead the Cardinals on a game-winning drive. Kentucky kicking off. Back to receive Broderick Clark, who had a 100-yard kickoff return earlier in the game. And he's loose down to the 25-yard line. And send it down to Tracy Wolfson. Yeah, guys, these next four minutes are huge for Dave Ragon and his Heisman campaign. This school is hoping that they can come away with a win because they produce 3,000 of these bobbleheads. Look, with the facial hair and all. But only 500 of these are actually going to be sold. So if you can get your hands on one of these and they win this game, it could be worth a lot of money someday. That's right, Tracy. The rest of those bobbleheads went to major media outlets around the country. Ragone. He's done everything he can possibly do. The offensive line has not been good. The wide receivers have not always gotten open, but they start to drive from the 25, first and 10. Under pressure again, escapes out of the pocket, is hit and down at about the 27-yard line, but there looks to be a flag on the play. In the area of holding, looks like I want to know how you can hold if you're getting hit that much. Whoa. You think there'd be no pressure if you're getting held, huh? My goodness. It's interesting, Mark. You know, you see, we saw the numbers 13 to 34 on Ragone, but don't be misled. And a lot of times, on the offense, ten-yard penalty in the previous spot, go first down. A lot of times, what happens is 
great quarterbacks find a way to win when their statistics aren't good. You don't care about it. You know those guys that can go 7 out of 21 and make the play when it matters. Ragone's obviously got that capability. So while Heisman's about statistics, you got to look deeper than that and say what the guy's been dealing with all night and still managing to keep his team in the game. When they needed the touchdown before the end of the half, he was gassed. He found a way to run the ball, get out of trouble, make the pass when he had to and score, and they need to have him come up big now. Again, under pressure, escapes, looks downfield, intercepted. Intercepted, but there's a flag on the play. Mark. Irvin Flowers comes up with the ball, but the flag is coming from deep in the secondary, and this could be against Kentucky. Pass interference, defense, spot foul, automatic, first down. The penalty on number 27, Leonard Burress. Let's take another look at this thing. Mark, there's the holding right there. You see him grab his jersey. He does it right in front of the official. That's a good call. That is a very good call. And the hit Dave Ragon took, he got sandwiched. Take a look at this real quick, Mark. Front and back, boom! You're not supposed to get up from those hits. That's a tough quarterback. He has been brave heart tonight. Scramble left in the backside. Pressure hit as he throws. And Ragone is down. Ball is incomplete. He's slow to get up. Jeremy Cottle with a hit. Number 68 who's had a big night from the right defensive tackle spot. And you know, both sides are, are playing hard. But look at Cottle's effort to the quarterback. Number 68 and the pressure coming from the backside. But you know what, Mark? Eventually is an offensive line, and they've done a better job in the second half. 23rd knockdown. He's been to the ground 23 times in the game. It comes a point in time as an offensive lineman, enough's enough with the sense of pride that says, you know, I can't get my guy killed. And Look that's two him. plays in a row. I don't know how he's surviving. He's gassed again, number 15, 325 left in this game from the shotgun. Under pressure, throws the screen, but the back gets caught up with the lineman in this one. Lionel Gates can't get to the football. And again, that was a poorly conceived play. They read the screen well. There's a ton of confusion here at the top of the field. Take a look. Got a receiver coming inside. Going to muddy the water with the screen. Too many bodies over there. And linemen in the way of the throw. Jerry Plus there was Spencer, Cottle. Yeah. yeah, and there was Cottle was on pressure yeah. again, Mark. Six straight incompletions now for Rago. 320 left, third and ten. snap. The goal gets away. Directs traffic. Throws it down the field. It's tipped and intercepted. Mike Williams, the outside safety, picks off the ball. Rago hammered again when he was throwing the ball by Dwayne Robertson. And Mark, that's a case of a, an All-American candidate and a Heisman Trophy candidate who's been doing everything for him all night. Going to the well once. There you see him a little bit tired and upset on the sideline. There's, first of all, a horrible snap for about the sixth time out of the gun tonight. Ragone keeps it alive, trying to direct. Ball comes out a little bit high, and when the ball's tipped, eventually things like that are going to happen. Mark trying to make a play, but this looms as one of the great upsets early on. Kentucky's defense looks like a team who's a top five defense, don't they? Pressure all night, yet they were one of the worst in NC2A last year. People were looking ahead to September 26th when Florida State rolled in here to see whether or not this number 18 ranked Cardinal team was for real but they don't look like you're going to get past Kentucky here a team that went two and nine and a team that with a win tonight will make their entire season and look like Guy Morris is headed in the right direction with this program. Mark and we all have that three or four minute drill now with 250 left to go to be able to control the ball and not let Ragone who's a great player get another shot at this you got to get a couple first downs remember uh, Louisville's coach John L. Smith told us this team did not practice well in the fall and it showed tonight. Picked up five down, uh, five yards on first down makes it second and five. Again up the middle. That's Penner. Picks up a couple of more. It's close to the first down marker and it looks like we have a timeout. 
clock is stopped with 2.21 left. Mark, you made the point, and you've you stressed the point, that Kentucky said, we got to get him the ball 25 times. That is running back Penner. I think he's at 26 carries. Oh, he got a five-point lead. Man alive, it's amazing how these things work out. Penner, 26 carries. I think he's at about 83 yards, Mark, and there it is. 26 for 83 and a touchdown so far in this game. Two hit it. Cardinals, three timeouts remaining. And uh, they did not take a timeout. They must have stopped the clock to spot the ball. But it's not a first down. It's third and inches. And the clock is running now. Buck 47. And again, the quarterback sneak with a hefty lefty. Jared Lorenzen. Lorenzen and this UK football team have been dominated by the University of Louisville for tonight a record crowd of 42,660 including some Kentucky fans have witnessed one of the big upsets early on in college football protect that football is what they're going to tell them on the sideline mark we have an injury on the field we're going to take a timeout when we come back we'll conclude university of louisville and the wild two minutes left that's bobby lefew the defensive tackle the sophomore is being helped off the field with a leg injury and the crowd here has been silenced as jared lorenzen and the uk wildcats are on the verge of pulling up a huge upset here over number 18 louisville Louisville's going to take a timeout. So let's go back and look at the critical third and inches, third and one look at for this. UK. There's the line of scrimmage, Mark. They're going to get to there. That's called push by your guys up front. Nice push, dominant. Got a quarterback who's helping out, who's as big as those linemen. But that's when it comes to the critical time when you're inside of two minutes, have to get some push and not give we're going another shot at it. There's your first down. And there's what well, we're down to two timeouts left for Louisville. So you just got to be safe, and they're going to tell Penner to hold on to the football because he's carried it 26 times, and he's been outstanding tonight. Well, check out the total yards because the total yards are amazing. Kentucky, 270 total yards. Louisville with Dave Ragone and this great offense, 189 yards. The offensive line has been porous at best. Ragone has taken a beating. They haven't been able to put together a running game. In fact, Ragone is the leading rusher and leading passer for the Cardinals tonight. So the play clock now ticks at about 15 seconds. There's a minute 43 left, first and 10. Yeah. And they hand it off to R2 Spinner. And we get a quick timeout by the Cardinals. Mark, Three yards on the game. Amazingly enough, you saw those, what, the 187 yards Kentucky's defense has given up tonight. Last year, they were 109th total defense in the NC2A. And they told us in the meeting, for, they were embarrassed by that. And so they've stepped out here, all the talk Lorenzen and Penner. The defense has done an awesome job. The pressure they put on tonight has been unbelievable. It really has. And again, we can't reiterate to you out there how big a win this is for the University of Kentucky, not only for their football team and their program, but for head coach Guy Morris, who is trying to pick up the pieces after how Mummy left and this football team and this program went on probation. And there's no question. And his hand, the hand he's had, the cupboard's been bare. I mean, he's had to make this happen with a lot, a lot less guys during training camp. And on the other side of the ball, when you look at Louisville, this is a football team that wanted to break that BCS party because they felt real good. Right. But as Coach Smith warned us, we're not that good a football team, and they got to go back to the drawing board. Again, you look forward. They've got Colorado State still to come, Florida State, as we mentioned, on September no 26th. But the big hump was getting over the University of Kentucky. Again, you've got a lot of young players. John L. Smith, who's had a wonderful career and turned programs around, done a great job. In five years here, uh, just wanted to get through this first game, and you look at the schedule. Not easy. Some pretty good football teams Not out there. Not easy. Absolutely Won't be easy. UAB, going on the road. Cincinnati, Southern Miss. I mean, not to mention Colorado State, Florida State, as we mentioned. So again, they're going to lick their wounds after this one. Try to get this up. We can probably say too that for Dave Ragone, his Heisman hopes are probably over after this game. Well, after you watch what left, which did yesterday, you might be right, Mark. But he gave a great effort. Statistics misleading. His effort was single-handedly kept him in a game. It was a Heisman Trophy effort. There's no doubt about that. But he didn't get much help. 
We're going to take a timeout. We'll be back with the conclusion of this football game. The Wildcats lead Louisville 22 7. I sat there and looked at it, and, the, and the, the conservative part of me says, I'll run it twice or, or pooch it or do something or kill it. But you know what? A field goal here, after a nice big field goal by the Kentucky last time, I might kick the field because then you put the game completely out of reach. I know you're worried about a block, and you got to take that into consideration. But he's trusted his players, has Guy Morris. I kick it if I don't get the first down. Well, we'll find out here if they have to make that decision on third and five. Lorenzen on the naked boot. Stiff arms a defender. He's got some room, finally slides wisely before going out of bounds. That's a good play by a quarterback there to keep the clock running. Minute 18, 17, and ticking away here. And again, I don't think you kick the field goal And they might, they might just punt this ball, Mark, just a little tap punt, make them the go. The way the your distance. defense has played, the way the offensive line of Louisville has played, I put the game in the hands of my defense. I get after Dave Ragone, who's been gassed in the second half. And you know, Mark, that's a great point. Plus this now, maybe you take the penalty, back it up five yards, and give your punter a little more pooch room, try to knock it out of bounds, and make them go the, the 80 or 90 yards it takes. With that sack right there, I think it's a good idea. Don't, don't kick it now, being the fact that it becomes almost a 50-yard kick. You don't want to do that. John L. Smith watches that precious time tick off the clock as UK now takes a timeout. And we're going to take a quick break here. This game is not over. Will it be an upset shock? UK Louisville, we come back. Kentucky, number 18, Louisville, trailing the University of Kentucky Wildcats. Mark Malone, Sean Salisbury, and Tracy Wolfson. Just a reminder that Mac Tools U.S. Nationals is coming up next year, right here on ESPN2. Guy Morris, got to make a decision. Fourth and eight, 44 seconds on the clock. Do you kick the field goal? Do you pooch punt it? You just go ahead and try to run the football. They've had some time to talk about it. Personally, I think you do a little quick kick here. Get it off. Try to put them deep in their own territory and make them drive the length of the field with under a minute to play. Yeah, and it looks to me like, Mark, they're going to get up and go to the gun. And <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Maybe they just sweep Lorenz, and I don't know. This is a... I'd be surprised if they put it in the air. There There's it is. Quick the pooch kick. kick out of the regular formation with nobody back. Good call by Guy Morris. The ball down inside the 10 with 37 seconds left in this football game. And you know what? There is a flag down, but I like the pooch kick. And you know what? Get him back there, let him do it. And obviously turned out better than a punter could, too, Mark. He's got more flexibility and more athleticism than I think maybe we give him credit for. No question about it. He's a gunslinger. It. He loves to throw it and he can throw it. We've got a UK player down on the field. Can't yeah, for, see the number. For people at home that wonder, why don't you kick a field goal? It becomes a 51 yarder. You know, before right. that, before Lorenzo gets slides, before he goes out of bounds, it's 47. Maybe you consider it, but at 51 yards, you don't do that. Wise play. You made a good call there. After a play, that looks over, like the tight. Head ball. Personal fall, late hit, unnecessary roughness. Then maybe half the distance to the goal. First down. Frustration. So that's penalty, Chase Mark. Hart, the tight end number 11, who is up and moving around, but has a little sign for Louisville. And here it is right here, the penalty. As they watch the ball. Harp goes in there, picks up the ball, slides out of bounds, and there you can see the body flying. And again, that's just losing your composure, upset. This is a shocking loss, or what looks to be a shocking loss for Louisville. And, and, and that was fans. cheap. Oh, that's absolutely. Bottom line, cheap. Absolutely. But the bottom line is they take over on downs at about the three-yard line. Uh, 37 seconds left. I'll tell you what, if Dave Ragone can drive the length of the field, this guy deserves to be the Heisman Trophy winner. <laughs> At least after week one, huh? Incomplete under pressure. 31 seconds remaining. No timeouts remaining for John L. Smith and the Cardinals. They need a miracle here. And if you're Kentucky, if they throw the ball up, one of those Hail Mary types, no pass interference. Play the ball. You don't want to give them a shot at midfield to go into the end zone. Yeah, but right now you need to get to that midfield no area. Doubt. Give so yourself you a chance. Give yourself a shot at the end zone or down right. near the end zone. Shotgun formation. We're going in the end zone. Three wides to the left. Again, under pressure. Hit in the end zone. Somehow escapes. Still on his feet and makes his way out to the nine-yard line. But again, no timeouts. Clock is running. 18. 17. This is all but over for Louisville. Give that guy no. some kind of medal. I'll tell you what. what Trying performance. to stop the clock. This game is over. Three, two, 
They do get the snap off. Wait a second, we've got a whistle. I thought there was still a second on the clock when I saw the flag come in. I believe the officials were concerned about Ragon and whether or not he was a target. It seemed hurt. But he's been a target all night. He sure has, Mark. There will be no early wake-up call for him in the morning. Zero completions in his last eight attempts. Put two seconds on the clock. Two seconds on the clock. Mark, even though Louisville's going to lose this game and yeah. their own statistics weren't very good, you know what? He showed me, he took it his toughness and my respect for him to another level tonight to be oh, able to battle like no that. Doubt. I know no a lot doubt. of quarterbacks would have wanted to be sitting over here on the bench because they were getting pummeled. When you lose players like you know, Zeke Parker and Branch, Deion Branch, it's going to be tough. The going scrambles out of the end zone. One last gasp. Throws a laser to the 40. Across midfield, and wait a second, it's not over. A lateral from Damian Dorsey, and finally, the tackle is made inside the 40 at about the 38, but it's over. Dave Ragon, a last gasp effort, and the Wildcat fans, the few that are here that made their way from Lexington, enjoy the upset here at Papa John Stadium. And everybody thought we were going to have a 1,000 yards off as Mark. You know what? We caught kudos to Lorenzen and to Ragon and to Penner. Let's, the defense of Kentucky was as good as you'll see on any given Saturday or Sunday throughout this football season. I would tend to agree with you. And congratulations to Guy Morris. I mean, he has uh, had to do this, uh, you know, with, with paste and paper clips, obviously. Uh, fewer and fewer scholarships to work with. He's picking up the pieces, and it's a tough thing for the Louisville players. Yeah, don't Again. tell those guys that the game doesn't matter, no. huh, Mark? Well, that's going to do it. Kentucky wins 22 to 17. Good night from Louisville. For Sean Salisbury and Tracy Wolfson, I'm Mark Malone. The Mac Tools U.S. Nationals is next. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more information on our college football broadcasts, you can log on to ESPN.com. Keyword schedule. For Sean Salisbury, I'm Mark Malone. So long from Louisville.